Well, you're enthroned on the mercy seat. Well, I come before the throne of grace. Well, you're enthroned on the mercy seat. And I worship you.
and all the judgment. I see your mercy triumphing over judgment. I see your mercy rejoicing over judgment. I see your mercy triumphing over
sweet smell of praise go rising the sweet smell of prayer go rising rising up oh God. rising up
Let the sweet smell of prayer go rising, rising up. Sweet smell of praise go rising. Let the sweet smell of prayer go rising, rising up, rising up to you. Let the sweet smell of praise go rising. Let the sweet smell of prayer go rising, rising up, rising up. Father, we thank you that we can consecrate this ground called Jerabek Elementary School to you, that every mind-blinding spirit that has hid the gospel and the beauty of who Jesus is would no longer be effective, be able to work. Holy Ghost, we thank you. You come and invade this place. People want to know what's happening to them. But Father, we make this sacred ground right now in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. <laughs> well, listen, to this. I want to keep praising. I want to keep worshiping, but... You know, there's just there's just a lot of things to say, and I, I, just, I want you to I don't, I don't want you to stop. I want you to let the fire kick in because that ain't happened yet. And the offering's got to stand around sometimes for a while, especially. Listen, come here, people. Listen to me. Could you gather up yourself and recognize that really Sunday is a time you and I better start breaking through. Otherwise, you know, we're gonna get overrun. I don't know if Bernadine is watching tonight, but Bernadine took it on, man. She took it on. And Fida had gathered against her with such, I mean, they, I mean, they came in mass numbers. And they were, I was going to share the, I was going to share the clip, but it's just too much cussing, too many foul language, too much foul language. And they were just ripping her, just saying every foul thing, trying to shut her down. And she's preaching and ministering on the courthouse steps. I believe it was up in Portland. And she just turned and she, after the, they just kept going on and on, she couldn't preach and minister. She said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, she began to yell out. She said, I, I don't know if Bernadine is Native American or if she's Hispanic, but she's just absolutely radical. She said, listen, I will not be intimidated by you anti-Christ, anti-God, domestic terrorists. They want to shut down the voice of the gospel of the United States of America. You know, I'm listening to her just going after it. I'm going, wait a minute, man, I want in the fight. Hold up, move back. <laughs> Move up. Give me some place. People, you know, I'll just watch folks as they go around hiding behind rocks and caves. And then, you know, just like Israel was when they were powerless without the anointing. When they had so rebelled against God, there was no authority to advance against the enemies of God. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, faith will put subdue, will, every, will subdue every principality and power of darkness. We say the armies of the aliens, you know, Hebrews chapter 11 from the King James. We just go after it. We just break it down. No, no, many of you don't know it because you live in your little safe world. You go to your job. You come home. You don't know what's going on. You don't understand. You have no idea what's going on in the streets of America. You have no idea the fortification that is already here within the framework of the Western United States. And everybody just went out to lunch today, didn't you? I mean, after all, you know, come on, Sunday shouldn't be, you know, can we just give God some time in the morning and the evening. And why should we be? Why should we stay upon our face before the Lord? Why should we make sure that the people that are ministering to the Lord don't have anything else to do but to minister unto the Lord? And that's all got to stop. You know, I remember a long time ago where the powers of darkness effectively moved into the church and shut down Sunday night meetings. You know, because everybody said, well, you know, the, they, they counted the electric bill and all the other things more important because there wasn't that many people showing up. And after all, all the costs that are being affected when there's only 20 or 30, it's the best 20 or 30 that could have been in the meeting. You shut down the meeting for the best 20 or 30 people that could have even been there. 
There are those that weren't there for any other reason but lay hold on God. People that have no idea what's happening in the streets of America. People have no idea the agenda the, sat- the satanic powers of darkness have launched against us. Infada actually started as a movement in Palestine among the Palestinians as an attack against Israel. And it means rebel or resist. And all that happened here in America is a bunch of people who are misinformed, a bunch of youngsters that have been absolutely inundated with lies and propaganda from the realms of darkness because there's a big void. You know what, what was happening when I was listening to St. Bernadine? Bring it, I'm telling you, she was just letting it flow. You will not bully me. You will not shut me down. There was like just a handful of Christians, and I mean an army of Amphida, an army. Their voices just, when she got finished, there was silence. It was silence. The, the, the foul things that was, they were saying to her, chanting. And I was, as I was listening, I'm going, you know, we're not going to go to ev- only go to every zip code in the county of San Diego and watch God build this thing. I mean, that's 180 zip codes, but we're just going to do 100. We're just going to do basically 112 to 120. That take 10 years, but the Lord's going to bring more people. We're going we're to move out of the realms of, you know, the little congregation on the block. Praise God for the little congregation on the block. If you don't understand the value of a church on every corner, I promise you, Islam does. They understand the value of the synagogue. They understand the value of the icon. I promise you they do. But I'm going to treat, I'm going to treat San Diego County. I've been in here for 36 years. I mean, I just, everybody, probably just about everybody who's been around in, this, in ministry in this city know me personally. And we're not letting up. I mean, we've had, we had great ups. We've had, you know, times of lulls. We're in a lull right now, kind of as it were. But watch out. It's a new assignment in God. We're going to do this thing. Watch what happens. I mean, the land that the Lord just gave to us up, up in Campo, which is not that far away. I mean, I, we could put like 10,000 people out there. And nobody could say nothing. Nobody could say nothing. And I understand how land under rights have been violated. But you know what? I understand also where the, I understand where the line is too. I understand when the, I want to understand that it's, there is a particular line, which would be the last thing fallen in freedoms in America. I remember what, I was coming back from, I was coming back from Mbaba in Egypt. And I was actually coming back. It's where all the terrorists came. Most all the terrorists came from Mbaba. If you, the radical, if fundamentalist, Islamic folks, they're from Mbaba. And the Lord has sent me there to see the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire come on about 500 girls who were in, a little over 500 girls who were in prostitution. The Lord had brought them out. And actually, one of the chief imam's daughters was in that meeting that night. And on the, but and God did great things then, it's like this is in the year 2000. And um, on the way back, the Lord said, you need to take it to the streets and exercise the freedom that you're about to lose. And never would anybody have thought that it would have progressed as fast as it has. You know, I started, I started realizing today, you know, as I was listening to St. Bernadine bring it, that no, I, we can't just be allowing... Yeah, I want to invade the schools. I want to invade the universities. There's going to be an opportunity to do that. But it's got to be also one month out in the streets. I mean, because I, you know, just let the power of God do what only the power of God can do. And it, you know what it is? You know, if you go with a protest mentality, you, you lose. But if you go in the fire, the baptism of power, and authority, look, you guys, just understand. Joshua's got to be freed up to wait upon the Lord. You can't be babysitting. John's got to be freed up to wait upon the Lord. Chris has got to be freed up. Deborah's got to be freed up. Everybody's ministry, they can't be piled up. They've got to be freed up. We've got to understand, people, we engaged in a battle. Listen, the Lord wants to gird his sword upon his side and come right prosperously through the region of Southern California. Southern California, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been in some of the most remote places on the planet where you don't even think that they ever, they ever or even heard English before or seen a white man and they got MTV right out of L.A. No, I'm, no I've been there in the most re- remote regions of the earth. And you think, what? Where did you even get that little TV and that little satellite dish? Are you kidding me? And they're not watching nothing. They're not watching Benny Hinn. They're not watching, they're not watching what? You know, what, what all the different television programs are, TV. 
what is it? Whatever it is. TBN, is that what it is? We wish. But nonetheless, and all the rest of the stuff, praise God for what they're doing, but come on, man, let's have the reality of the gospel. They're not watching that. They're watching MTV. <laughs> I was in a back street. We were in a back street. Jeremy and I were in a back street in Kashmir, in some remote little village in Kashmir, and, they, and one of the guys recognized I was an American and said, oh, uh, what was the guy's name? Not Jesse Jackson. Michael Jackson. I'm sorry, I'm not, real, I'm not very literate with all these guys' names. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. That's all the English he knew. Michael Jackson. USA. Woo-hoo. Michael Jackson. That's pathetic. What do you think about it? They don't know me and you. They know Michael Jackson. They don't know nothing about the church, the glorious church. They don't know about the one who been vested by the Father to have all power and authority in this earth. But Michael Jackson? And the list goes on. Come on, people. We've got to get it real here. You think you Look, you know, we used to sing a song when I was in, you know, the little guy. Hey, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. We still think we are on recreation. We're on vacation. Everybody's on one big gigantic retreat. Christian retreat. <laughs> it's time we start moving around now. It's time we start bringing it, people. Come on now. You're going to become walking in here all sleepy and tired because work done consumes your life and body. You're now in the midst of it. Yes. Oh, we ain't, we ain't, and there's no retirement center over here. We don't have no plush little easy chairs all cushiony for you while you yawn between the move of God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You just decide what you're going to do, man, because it's getting thick. Yeah. It's getting thick. Yeah. And there's only, one th there's only one power that would turn the tide at this joint, at this point. There's only one power that would turn the tide. Yes. The antisocial chemical properties of marijuana have been proven. The antisocial properties, chemical properties of marijuana is without question. And now it's legalized so everybody can just go ahead and get medicated. Right. And I'm going to tell you right now, in, in Japan right now, did you know that the majority of, of, of young people in J Japan never leave their bedroom or living room? It's true. Because of antisocial structures that want to isolate everybody. Right now, the, about, the only way that we could think about a missions plan to reach Japan is to where that we're actually broadcasting through the internet and grabbing things that will, will, that will get their attention so we can speak a little bit into their life. You know what the suicide rate is? You know what the suicide rate is around here? I mean, think about it, people. I'm telling you right now, the laborers are few. I'm going to take, we're going to take this region on just like we took on Nepal, just like we're taking on Kashmir. Come on, people. Look, oh, come on now. I understand what we up against. I want you to understand it too. I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger, blaming anything on you. You just, I want to help you understand. You know, you don't know you in the midst of the battle, and the powers of darkness are going to do everything, shut you down, and make you uninfluential when the need is, when you know, when it's time to move, when the need arises. You don't feel all kinds of resistance. You got to learn how to, you got to learn how to do something more with your life, huh? Than have a little time of prayer in the morning. Little time of prayer in the evenings, little Bible study, little you know, little comforts here and there, and ask God when is He going to bring more, you know, your way, more of the blessings. It's time for us to go ahead and take up the cross. It's time to embrace the cross. It's the power and the wisdom of God. You embrace the cross. You embrace a complete surrender of your life, a sacrifice as we were singing over to, singing tonight. You embrace a complete surrender of your life that Christ Jesus in his resurrection power may, may be manifested through our life. No embracing the cross, no manifested Jesus in his resurrection power. So when is it, when is it we're going to quit being so worldly? That's our own interest. Well, understand that. People mystifying worldliness. They mystifying so many things. It's just like, wait a minute. If, if God is going to move through your life, you're going to, you're going to leave everything. You're going to deny yourself. You're going to take up your cross. You're going to leave it all behind. Amen. We want to take it all with us and then say, hey, Lord, excuse me, I forgot a couple of things. I'll be back in a couple of years. Praise God for his mercy. No, look, God is long-suffering. He's full of loving kindness and tender mercies. But somebody's going to have to get fit for the battle. Somebody's, somebody's going to have to resign their life over. Yeah, Come on, people. 
Why, I mean, I'm, I'm going to throw some things out at you. Why do you go to a restaurant to make other people have to work on Sunday? As you praise the Lord and, tip, and, and tip them, tell them how good Jesus is. Are you kidding me? People say, oh, you, now you're getting legalistic and, you know, now you're getting all religious. No, I'm not. It's only legalistic and religious if you don't want to do it. You know, they talk about obeying God as legalism. No, it's legalism because you don't want to obey God. You don't want to do what's right. Well, people, I'm telling you right now, we need to get some principle in our life that lines up with what we say we believe. I've got a whole bunch of these. I'm going I'm to go... I'm going to go easy on it tonight because I'm mean, the really most important point that I want to make is what we need to realize that God is preparing us to do as we're going to 112 zip codes. I'm not talking about some easy little road over here, people. I'm talking about Father wants to prepare you and I to be able to face such radical opposition. Not of men, that ain't nothing. Amphida, I mean, give me a break. I'm, not, I'm getting ready to go face the government of Nepal. I'm not even worried about them, man. They're just the little minions. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm up in the face of the boss saying, back off. His name is Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And then they, you're just going to show up. You're going to show up, and now you're going to have a movie. The Holy Ghost. You're going to show up, and now you're going to have. You're just going to show up, and you're going to expect the outpouring of this most sacred thing that exists on the planet the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the most sacred thing that exists in all God's creation, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Church ought to have a president of baptism in the Holy Ghost. It should be presented by an expectation of the fire of God and the power of God, which is the only means by which the glory and person of Jesus Christ is revealed. So after we went to the meeting and we got scolded by the pastor. Come on, nobody's scolding you. Huh? We, we, aren't, we aren't home with the, we aren't home with the, the, with the young children. We up here on the, up on the front lines over here. Are you listening to me? Uh, hallelujah. I like this particular Civil War movie that, that I saw one time, and Andrew Jackson, Stonewall Jackson, rather, he's walking back and forth, and he's encouraging the troops. You the first, you know... In the heart of Virginia. You're the first infantry in Virginia. You're the first this and that and the other thing. This is what we're going to do today. I'm looking, I was looking at Venezuela, you know, and all these people willing to go give their life for, to, get, to reduce communism to socialism. To trade one, one dictator for another. I'm just like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. Huh? People don't even know what's going on in Venezuela and trying to make political decisions. Do not pray according to CNN. Do not pray according to Fox News. Do not. It's wrong. Pray according to divine insight. Because otherwise you're praying the wrong thing. Praise God, he's not listening to you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. We want to see Venezuela touched by the fire of the Holy Ghost. The only thing that's going to change Venezuela at this point is a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It's the same thing that's changing North Korea from within. You know, you get all the broadcasting. It's just that we need to... God's going to give us the grace. Somehow somebody's going to get it. We're going to have some real valuable, you know, news from, for the church. If you understood what was happening in North Korea right now in the church, but how many people do we have that's willing to do the underground pipeline? And I'm not going to tell you where it is because we're on the, on the Internet. And go into North Korea, check everything out, get the inside story, preach a little bit, then come back out and say, you should hear what's happening now, how big it is now. There ain't no way no little chubby boy can keep up with God. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Little chubby boy with a bunch of army that's basically, you know, malnourished and, 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 and deprived of food. You think they can keep up with the glorious church of the army of God? What kind of, what kind of God are you serving, man? What, is he way up somewhere far, far away in another galaxy, a prisoner in his own whatever? No, he's standing right in our midst, waiting for somebody to agree with him, to recognize his authority. Jesus framed up all, framed up all faith within the context of recognizing his authority. He said, that's great faith. Are you listening to me? Yes. It was great faith when the centurion came to him personally. It was great faith that another centurion actually sent ambassadors to him. 
the centurion that actually came to Jesus, Matthew chapter 8, the, another centurion of Luke chapter 7 that sent ambassadors. Both of them had something in common. One of three people that was said to have great faith in Scripture. They recognized his authority. I was in Japan saying, Lord, what is it going to take for Japan? I mean, Japan's a free society. My goodness, you can't even tell that Jesus has hardly ever even been there. And everybody's afraid to preach in the street. I was preaching in the street one night, and some elders of a church came and said, Oh, no, 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 you can't do that. It's against the law. I said, What law, man? They said, Where is that written? Show me that law. Who's been arrested lately? Let's test it. Now, that's what I told people in Nepal back in 2006. Everybody's going to go to jail. Let's test it out. And I just basically went after it, talked to them in such a way that they would basically be just cowards and out of the picture if they didn't get on the platform. Are you with me? Of course, God the Holy Ghost stirred them, gave them, some, gave them a little bit of a backbone, a little bit of valiance. See? I said to the guys in Japan, I said, where is this? Oh, no, it's an unwritten law. I said, well, let's just defy that unwritten law right now. Let's just put it to the test. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, really? We're going to put it in the test. I love Japan. I love the nations. I love what God's doing in Azerbaijan right now. I love what God's getting ready to do in Armenia. The war in Azerbaijan and Armenia getting ready to stop. God's going to do it. Armenia is going to have a revival, and the Orthodox Church is not going to be able to stop it. The Orthodox Church of Armenia is going to get out the way. And the Orthodox Church of Georgia is going to get out the way. And the Orthodox Church of America is going to get out the way. I said, can you please talk a little bit more nice? Look, God clothed me in rough clothing. <laughs> Are you with me? I'm not only not so, my, my shirt's not no silk t shirt, silk tie, uh, silk bloomers. <laughs> I mean, listen, you, you got to go find somebody. You like, that's what you want to hear. They go over there because I'm not in that. I'm over here in an army. I'm over here in a war. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I'm in the midst of a battle. Yes in which God told me to be very valiant. He said, I, I'll tell you right now, just imagine when you stand before the Lord, he said, no, 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 don't tell me about your cowardness because I gave you all my strength, all my power, all my might. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Don't tell me why you couldn't do it. You're not going to do it anyways. Are you with me? Yeah. And I praise God for the valiant people that are in this place Amen. and what's already happened in this community this week. Yeah. Now, this morning I had an open vision. I saw, the, I saw a person, and I know it's the Lord, putting a gold medal you know the whole gold medal thing at the Olympics? Putting it over the, over the people's head in this, in this place. You win. I mean, I already won. I mean, I, I, already, I understand. I understand what took place when, you know, the, here's the word of God. Repent and believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Huh? Repent. And be baptized, believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you'd be saved. And, and, and I understand what God did in that, in that beautiful context. He absolutely removed every hindrance. He removed every you know, sin, everything that was between me and him, and fully empowered you and I to receive all that he has. And we've reduced it to a good song service. Or reduced it to a lot of different things. I'm not the brings nothing to bear in the reality of seeing nations shaken, souls transformed by the power of God. Jesus manifested and revealed through our lives. And somehow we can, we can be happy with that? That's weird. I'm going to tell you right now, I learned a long time ago that deception is no respecter of intelligence. I said deception is no respecter of intelligence. It's true. I've seen some of the most bright people you can imagine deceived on the, on the craziest levels. Father wants to just sober us up, give us divine revelation, insight. Uh, Pentecost is, all, is not about all these other things we've made it. It's about being endued with power. The very power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The very power of the kingdom of God. So that you and I can run every demon of hell off. Not find some excuse to why the devils can overrun us. Not find some excuse as to why it should be as it is. I know things are going to get worse, but not on my watch. Are you listening to me? 
and not on Elijah's watch. Are you with me? You know, there's always be, always be a glorious church because there will always be a remnant. The apostate church will just grow greater and greater in strength and power and influence just like the apostate people of, under the first covenant grew greater and greater in influence to where the, there was a, the, the remnant of God was so small. By the days of Elijah, and that was the early days of the apostasy in the 8th century B.C., 7th, 8th century B.C. The Lord said, I got, look, you know, there's millions of Israelites, tens of millions of Israelites, and, and the Lord said, Elijah, what you concerned about? I got how many? Huh? Papa's happy with 7,000. Are you with me? I got 7,000. Hasn't bowed their knee to idolatry. I got 7,000 are truly worshiping me in spirit and truth. Huh? God took Gideon's army with 300 people. He's not looking for a lot. Father's not looking for a quantity. He's looking for a quality of surrender and obedience to believe him and walk with him. We think, we think God's favor is within, within, within numbers and within quantity. Where, when was that ever an experience in the Bible? It wasn't. God was always paring it down. When too many people were following Jesus and following him for the wrong motives, he said, turns to him and says, eat my flesh and drink my blood. You're not seeking me because of the miracles and the signs and wonders. You're just because you're seeking me because I'm going to give you another meal. That's an insulting thing. You only hear because you want to eat out of my, you know, out of my refrigerator. That's insulting. Are you with me? Somebody says that to you. You're like, you know, the only reason you came to church is because of the meal after the meeting. You're like, I'm not coming back here anymore. I've been so insulted. No, Jesus is trying the heart. Everybody's got Jesus have with a, this false love, this false humility. He's real, man. He's bringing the truth. And right now, we're looking at him standing in the midst of the, of the church as his eyes are flame of fire. He, he, he want Jesus, the lowly man of Galilee. Are you with me? Carrying a, little sh carrying a little lamb around in one hand, right? Stabbed in the other. And he's just sweet and accommodating, soft-spoken, a little bit of high-pitched voice. <laughs> just likes whatever you do. Fascinated by anything you do, like a mama with his baby. It's just not true. And even if he were like that and he wasn't, he's now returned to all the glory that he had with the Father before anything ever existed. And it's not, you're not relating to a Jesus 2,000 years ago. You're relating to a Jesus who's present alive right now, whose eyes are a flame of fire, and right now he stands in the midst of the church, and it just isn't back there in the book of Revelation 2,000 years ago. He's got a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, and he says, you better get right now. Yeah. What is he going to do with a sword? I'm far before him in honor and reverence and fear. He's so amazing. And all in the midst of all that, that's, he's nothing but lowliness and meekness. And from a human perspective, from our culture, we think that's a paradox. Those are somehow, you know, statements that are at odds with each other. They're not. You can be seated. I thought we were going to sing some more. We will. I just want the fire to come. What happens if I see a resistance to the flow? I'll start preaching the word. And I'm going to stop the word. Huh? And if I feel more resistant, oh, I'll get louder. Huh? Because I'm, look, you, you, I'm not in a recreation room. I'm in a battle. The Lord said, be strong. The strength of the Lord, power of his might. Huh? Why? Take unto yourself the whole armor of God. Why? I'm in a wrestling match. So I said, I thought the battle was over. <laughs> it is, but you're wrestling now. The nice thing about wrestling, nobody usually dies. Hey? I mean, Satan's been defeated. The powers of darkness, Satan and all of his imps of hell have been defeated at least twice now. And there's two more times. Two more great battles. True. One at the end of, the, of what we call the tribulation and one end at the end of what we refer to after as the thousand years reign of Christ or the millennial reign of Christ. That's the final one. It is still across, affected it forever. It's sealed. It's sealed. It's done. It's done. You must understand that the same one who wrote Colossians chapter 2 and said he, in verse 15, that he led open display of all the principalities and powers of darkness, showing that he had triumphed over them and they were completely defeated, is the same exact one. 
He says, take unto yourself the whole armor of God because you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. First of all, against principalities, the Greek word arche, which is a word that you find for beginnings. It's, no one translates it beginnings because it's too difficult to understand. It's orchestrated power. Orchestrated, demonic, hellacious, angels of darkness power. Huh? Look at Michael and Gabriel when they came up against the prince of Persia in Daniel chapter 10. Think about that. Huh? These, these, I'll tell you right now, these guys got some ability, but they got nothing could, on us. Unless you still live a life of sin more or less every day, and some find some excuse because all God understands. They didn't understand. He washed our sins away, filled, gave us a new heart, a new spirit, baptized us in the Holy Ghost and fire, filled us up with such supply of heaven that it's like rivers flowing out of us, gave us the very life of God, called us his temple. I can't help but you defile the temple right, left, and center, and all your experience is, is just understanding defeat from the powers of darkness. God's purpose is that we know no defeat. That the, that the wicked one cannot even access us. We know that everyone that is born of God does not sin, yes. but keeps himself and the wicked one can't access him. That is absolutely intolerable. If I'm going to make it acceptable, I've got to say it like this. I've got to eliminate some of the word. We know that everyone is born of God, keeps himself, and the wicked one cannot touch them. Oh, that's palatable. I like that. Oh, wow, that's good preaching. No, I left out a whole phrase of the scripture. And if I continue to preach it that way, God's going to remove my name from the book of life. So he said. True. The, it, the, the law of the covenant of the Karat was put down in Deuteronomy after Moses had finished writing by hand all that God had revealed. Hmm? The order of the covenant was put down in Revelation. Don't add to it. Don't take from it. That was the order of the covenant. The, the, that, was the, that was the order of the covenant with the warning, do not violate. If you do, it's karat. You'll be cut off. But then Paul said it even more radically in Galatians chapter 1. Everybody's without excuse. He said, if you, or he said, if anyone, an angel, or even we, he opens himself up to also potentially being deceived. Come to you. With any other gospel than you've already received from us, let them be karat, cut off, anathema. It's equal to karat in the Old Testament, which would be basically the only way you could understand karat of the Old Testament. It's the Hebrew word karat, to be cut off, is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. It's the only way you could understand it because you're never allowed back into the covenant. No matter. There's no sacrifice. There's no way back in. You cut off. You cut off from the people. You cut off from the, co you cut off from the covenant. You an outcast. You're not allowed back in. You forfeit all of your inheritance. Your land goes to your nearest relative. It's karat. <laughs> There's a lot of doctrine on the Old Testament. I understand why nobody's preaching about it. Oh, we want to talk about the temple and the tabernacle. What's it like to be in the outer court? And what's it like? You don't, know what even, you don't even know what you're talking about. Because it's not by the Spirit of God. It's just a bunch of brain-damaged people talking about what they don't know anything about. They've never seen in the heaven. They've never lived by the Spirit. They're trying to figure things out, and it's hidden from the natural man. You can't figure out the Word of God. It's hidden. All you get to know to begin with is that God sent His only begotten Son to rescue you from sin and darkness. All you get to know is that God sent His only begotten Son into this world, who, who in His glory and majesty left it all behind, laid it all aside, and stepped all the way down to the lowest of humanity. Because He could have come as the King of the world. But he didn't. Think about it. He could have come as the Redeemer and been king of the world. He's king of the, he's king of the universe. He's king of the universe. He truly is Malach HaOlam. He truly is the king of the universe. Hallelujah. And it's about time you and I get to know him because I'm telling you right now, he's absolutely in charge. As the Lord said to me in Japan, you know, and I'm crying out, Father, what's going on here? The Lord comes to visit me at 5 o'clock in the morning and says, listen. All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Authority, 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 authority. Oh, what's the with a couple of centurions around? I recognize your authority. All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. And, and the Lord dressed me. He addressed me. I got his attention. Mark. So the Lord said to me, Mark, 5 o'clock in the morning in Asia. There's a lot of things going on at 5 o'clock in the morning in Asia. Yeah. Huh? You know that? Over 300 million Christians praying in Asia at 5 o'clock in the morning. Talk about solidarity. 5 o'clock in the morning. 
Mark, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. I'm just looking for someone to agree with me. What I had to reckon with is, yeah, man, well, I can't find anybody. What I had to reckon with is that the Lord was talking to me. And I was obviously coming up on the short end of, of agreeing. You know, just, just begin to recognize his authority. Begin to move out of your stuff. You've got to forsake your stuff. You have to look. I don't hate to break the news to you. I'm happy to break the news to you. You have to get rid of all of your stuff. And at that moment, then, you've embraced the cross. At that moment. And until then, you haven't. Calls there. Invitations there. God loves you. You may know a lot about God. You may have experienced his presence. You may have even spoken in tongues. That don't mean nothing. Doesn't mean nothing. Paul lays it down in Galatians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Speaking in tongues don't mean nothing. Huh? If the fruit isn't there, it don't mean nothing. Are you with me? The most important fruit and evidence of the born again life. Love. Which always brings forth that which is essential for Pentecost. What does it bring forth? Lowliness. A word that the Greeks wouldn't even use. Lowliness is not even found in the Greek dictionary. Or in Greek literature. At all. The Greek word for it. It's not there. It was a despised thing. The only way you can get to understand it, because the only one place you can find its meaning is in the Septuagint in Isaiah 66 and verse 2. The Lord says, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. <laughs> what place are you going to make for me? Are you listening to me? And Isaiah is talking to us more than he is anyone else because Solomon's temple was still intact when Isaiah is prophesying 7th century. Northern Kingdom hasn't even been, you know, deported yet, much less the southern. Are you with me? Where's the place will you make for me? He said, this is where I, he said, unto this man will I look. Those that are lowly, broken, broken in spirit, broken, lowly. Jesus described it, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, poor. Jesus says in Matthew chapter um, 11, verse 28, come learn of me. I'm meek and lowly. I'm in, a, I'm in a place of being totally emptied of myself. No reliance upon myself for anything. This is what love produces. Love produces lowliness and meekness. I heard a person give, thank you, Father, for touching my baby. Right now, that infection gets out your lungs. He said, I want some virus. I say it's a demonic attack. Let's see who the Bible bears out better. Oh, well, that's, you know, no, the Bible didn't use those kinds of words because of its archaic, you know, terminology. Are you kidding me? Like the demons turned into a virus. They both have similarities. They don't exist outside of a body. They cannot influence anything outside of a body. They have to have a host. They have to have, they have, to have a host and have it a host to be even be expressed or to be visual, to be seen or measured. Pretty radical, eh? Yeah. I, was sitting, <laughs> I was sitting in a genetics class in undergrad. And like when I'm learning about virus, you know, viruses, the first thing that's coming to me is I'm just getting this up. Oh, look at that, you devil, you're lying right there behind that thing right now. In Jesus' name, I'm on you. Yeah. <laughs> now, we, get, we empower a lot of things that we shouldn't empower. We empower problems of our past. I watch people, you know, dear people, lovely people, people who really want to know the Lord, they want to go through, you know, some kind of inner healing. And they never, there's no, there's no headway there. Because there's no power through inner healing to change you. You just constantly repeat and continually give something of your past power over, to, over you to rule over you and influence you now. At some point in time, you're going to get redeemed. Yeah. You're going to repent yeah. and you're going to believe, Amen. be baptized, hallelujah, <laughs> and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because I didn't quote that part a little bit ago. The gift of the Holy Ghost. It's always supposed to be a package to be empowered. And then the nombro say, I tell you. And then a maqueste. stay. In that context, when Peter is talking about the gift of the Holy Ghost in, in Acts chapter 8, I'm not going to make it different in how he expressed gift of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 8 from how he ex expressed gift of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 in verse 38. Are you listening to me? People do all the time. Theologians, fighting against God, fighting against the power of God, demonized and don't even know it. 
Hmm? At least Amphida, Amphida, know that they are antichrist. There's a bunch of antichrist spirits in the midst of the church. Won't allow the Holy Ghost to operate. There's a bunch of wrong, false ideas about who God is and what he's given to us in our life that doesn't allow the Holy Ghost to operate in people's lives individually. You think that God is just going to bypass your disobedience? He's not. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up from the place that you're in. Start walking in the power that God has entrusted unto us. There's no body, there's no person that is sufficient of these things for themselves. To be able to do this and understand this, God the Holy Ghost, we depend upon God the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Every one person defining meekness. And it's a good definition. And, and the best way that they could define it, and it was a great Greek th theologian I have a lot of admiration for. He said, it's the best way to define meekness is a well-trained dog that always obeys, disciplined and always obeys. Because it's no longer to be self-willed. You're completely dominated. You're under the will of another. Did you know being under the will of another is very important and essential to the, your salvation? Did you know that? Yeah. From Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, I could do this all night long. The Lord says this, those that do my will, they're the ones who are right. He said, don't say, everybody says, Lord, Lord, they're coming into the kingdom. And he breaks it all the way down and says, though that you never did the will of the Father. Will, will, his will, not yours, not mine. Right. To 1 John chapter 2. The world and the lust thereof will pass away. But he that does the will of the Lord, who does Papa's will. Jesus mod models that for us. Jesus is the, is the testimony of that. He defines that. You can't define it any other way. He said, I, do not, I come to do the will of the Father. He showed us what it looks like to do the will of the Father. And he stepped all the way down from glory and took upon himself not only the place of, a, of taking on... <laughs> An, a human body made in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's not a birthday, people. Don't you celebrate Jesus' birthday around me. You want to provoke me? You want to get me going? And no birthday. He wasn't born 2,000 years ago. He never stopped existing. No part of him stopped existing. Otherwise, he's not eternal. Amen. Come on. It's amazing. You know, and even people that should know better, that are, there are people that are... I would respect the scholars and theologians. What are you doing, man? Stop it right now. Just, if you're going to do that, get out of my presence. I don't even want to be a part of that. He's eternal. Every part of him, not part of him, has ever ceased to exist. He was incarnated. It's a big difference between being incarnate and having a birthday. Are you with me? He's incarnated. The full glory of that person. Almighty God, the eternal word, was incarnated. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, well, I can't figure that out. Guess what? There's a lot of things you can't even, you don't even know how that electric works. You probably don't even know how to fix your, your car out there. Of course, you've got to have a computer now. Are you with me? Are you with me? Come on. It's, somebody said, how can it be? It's a miracle. Well, how can God always be, have always existed? He's a miracle. How can it be this and how can it be that? He's a miracle. Everything about him is a miracle. Isn't life a miracle? It's a wonderful miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only was he incarnated, but he, I mean, he didn't even get a rich family. Are you with me? He, you know what? He didn't even get the choice place. He, he would, you think he'd be born of the high priest? I mean, there's no place. He got no nothing. Huh? Mary and her genealogies had, had basically fallen into obscurity. Father hid him away so that no one could even understand. Could any good thing come out of Nazareth? Even though the Netzer was hinted to, he should cause a Netzer to rise out at the root of Jesse. A Netzer. What does that mean? Mm. Well, I think we should say, I think we should say a tender, a tender sprout. Is that really what it means? Ooh, think. He hid him away in Nazareth so that only the hunger could, hungry could ever see him. Huh? So that only the thirsty could ever know him. I was going to sort this thing out. All the pretend and all the other stuff, all the compromise is going to go away. All the wisdom of men will be counted and shown to be absolutely void, unable to present the reality of the person, Christ Jesus. I don't want to be depending on no wisdom of men. 
not mine nor anyone else's. And if I'm not going to go with mine, why would I go with anyone else's? Are you, are you with me? Are you, I don't want to give the examples. <laughs> I got a lot of coming to me right now. But he not only did that, but then he goes and he goes and he steps down further. Because um, what am I doing? I'm defining lowliness to you. He steps down further and becomes the foot washing servant. He becomes the lowliest of all servants. No Jew was allowed to oppress another Jew as, and, and, and assign them to foot washing's duty. You had to get a goyim, a Gentile. He said, no, 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 you don't understand what I'm doing. But if you don't receive this ministry, you have no part with me. Peter's like, wash my hair, everything. I said, no, 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 no. All you need is your feet washed because that's the lowliest part of your being. That's the only restriction of servitude that you've placed upon your servants. Oh, can you hear lowliness? Can't have it without love. The Lord actually says this. That if you don't have this love of Jesus Christ towards one another, you murderer. And that's how radical he is. First John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Go read it again. Slow down just a little bit. Because Bob is inviting us to do something that you can't do naturally. You've got to, it's supernatural. You've got to be, you can't be earthly. You've got to be heavenly. You can't be of the race of me, of Adam. You've got to become the race of Jesus Christ, the race of God. I do not have a genealogy going back any further than Jesus. Are you listening to me? I, you know, if I spend all the time on scripture is to prove this to you tonight, I'd be here a long time. And that's not my point. But it's the living reality. Made the family of God. Amen. Amen. No grandchildren. Amen. Amen. No grandchildren. Papa has no grandchildren. Huh. <laughs> We're born of the Spirit. This generation, this holy generation. I'm so glad to be in. You know, this is a time now that we get to do more in the kingdom and stand more for the Father and be more noticed than all throughout eternity. Because now we stand up against all of the forces of hell and all the powers of men's opinion. Men, that God is powerfully indeed with his image and his likeness, no matter what they're doing with it. Still, man created in the image and the likeness of God a capacity that Father gave to us that was far beyond what we are able to, you know, be a part of right now in many respects. Unless you've been born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and now the Spirit of God rules you still to your spirit. Did you know after you're born again, your spirit can kick in big time? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Well, God, the, God's Word shows us how to stop having our spirit kick in and submit rather to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Let Him be in charge. I'm telling you right now, the fight or flight modes, we know what your go-to shot is. <laughs> Are you listening to me? <laughs> the arm of flesh. Father, once you become valiant in the things of the Spirit, and how do you do that? You learn. You learn. We grow. We mature. But who's going to grow and mature? Who's got something beyond laying aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset you? Who's got some kind of a purpose like coming to the fullness of the maturity, the, the fullness of the measure, the maturity of, of Jesus' ministry, I mean, even into a fully matured man? Who's got that on their, their goal list? You got a date with it? I'm praying, God, listen, if we're the only ones that are going to march all around, we're going to march through this land called San Diego County. I'm not just going to march through the land of San Diego County because I'm going to be up in Seattle. Many of you are going to be up with me in Seattle. Then we're going to be in Olympia. Then we're going to come back down to Seattle, uh, Sacramento, then back to L.A. Meanwhile, in the, in the inter interim time, we're going to be in Nepal. We're going to be in Kashmir. Hallelujah. Kashmir taken by storm in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be in Zambia, Africa. We're going to be in so many different places. I mean, come on. Huh? Hey, look. And I'm going I'm to build this thing to the place where I is by necessity. Somebody said, oh, get to the point. You need a plane. No, I want to push it to the point I need to be translated. <laughs> You want to take about talking about being translated? You're not doing nothing, man. Why would you need to be translated? What? Did you want to have a trick? 
If you want to do signs and wonders, you, what are you doing that you need signs and wonders? I want to have a word of knowledge. What's going on that you need a word of knowledge? Discerning of spirits. Because that's all about revealing Jesus. It's a calling card to the kingdom of God. It's not to display a fruit. Because there's people got calling cards with, and don't have the fruit. I want nothing to do with your calling card. I'm looking for the fruit. I'm looking for the evidence of divine love. And then talk to me about it. I want to see that thing. People come to talk to me about fruits. I'm going to look at them. I'm, I'm going to discern what's going on in their life real quick. And I'm going to tell them what they did last night. I need that because people are under deception right now. And they're fighting against the Holy Spirit all on the basis of fruit. And they're the last one to got any. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. In Jesus' name. I'm just going to be a little bit radical. Not too, I'm not, I'm not be too ferocious tonight. Unless the Lord should want to crank this thing up a little bit in me. I'm going to stand with him. Come on, people. It's time to be valiant. Quit doing your own stuff. Quit doing your own stuff. Quit writing your own plan. Saying it's God. Oh, I got a discernment. I had a dream. Who cares what you have? What does he have? What is the authority to place in, he placed in a church? What they have? What do they have? Oops. You're not an American anymore. You're not a USA citizen anymore. Huh? You a, huh? You a child of the living God, filled with the Spirit, and belong to the kingdom. Hey, are you with me? You're supposed to be under the command of Almighty God. Are you listening to me? Not a bunch of undisciplined troops, everybody going their own way and calling their own shots. People, it takes pressing in. Pentecost is made up of something that is very important. The move of God is made up of something that is very important. Paul devotes so much scripture to it. Peter devotes a lot of scripture in, in totality of those things that he wrote. A lot of portion of the scripture is devoted to it. There has to be a union, a holy divine union. And, and when you look at it in the book of Acts, it's like they were all together in one place. Are you with me? In one accord. There was an entire agreement there. Paul talks about 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. He talks about how to maintain the move of God within the framework of the church, how to maintain this fire of God. He says, every one of you be perfectly joined together in the same realm of thinking. The same mind. Somehow we're going to have to be willing to let this mind which was in Christ Jesus be in us also. Who did not take equality with God as an advantage. Say, okay, I'm going, Papa. I'm going, but listen to me, okay? I'm going to go. What, what, Jesus wouldn't have been called Father Papa then. Huh? I'm going to go according to your word, your, according to your will as your word. Are you with me? Let me just... Paraphrase. This isn't in the scripture. Let me just set a scene for you. But I want to go in greatness. I want to be somebody. I want to be the spotlight. I want to have an anointing that absolutely just rocks this whole world and everybody just fascinated and overwhelmed by the anointing in my life. He didn't say any of that. Let this mind be in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, be also in you who did not take equality with God as a means to have an advantage, but humbled himself. Are you with me? Yes. Literally. But made himself void. But made him, I mean, King James, I think, said empty. The Greek word is to make void. Paul uses it. You made void faith. Are you listening to me, people? I want you to get this. This is a new type of training here. You weren't trained this for this in school. You weren't trained for this within the culture of, of and sociological setting of our life. This is something you better be taught by God. You have to be taught by the Holy Spirit. You have to come into training. Yes, you've been born again, praise God, but now you must learn how to live the life of the born again. Somebody gotta grow you up. You gotta be in Father's house. You gotta have an instructor. His name's the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit then instructs through that which God has placed within the church as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and you. No, no, no. Let's just go ahead and say it like, you know, we believe. God instructs us and trains us and perfects us to, you know, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles, and you. Oh, yeah, come on now. Come on, I'm going to pull on you now. Huh? 
I mean, just think about the authority and the submission that ultimately comes where you can actually hear God in the place where everybody's prophesying one by one while the other prophets are judging. There's a lot of prophets in the house. Are you listening to me? That's pretty radical. And Paul, having seen Jesus the way he saw and had received an abundance of revelation, which there is no equivalence of that. I hope you get that. Doesn't do his own thing, but waits until the ministry says, separate unto me, Paul. And Barnabas for the work that I've called, to the, called them to. And then after they prayed and fasted. Who needs to pray and fast? This is Paul. You know who he is. You know what he's done. You know the revelation is in his life. And plus, you know, you guys are all got a good, great track record. You know, of, 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 if you, two or three of you have already heard this from me, that's a done deal. No. It's a different kind of lowliness, isn't it? It's no self-will there. There's no, you know, just running with whatever little thing you got. Oh, I got a little piece. Of, I got a little message. I want to run. Or even worse, I have no message, but please let me run. Because the message was already sent by another messenger. But I want to run. Okay, run. Well, I'm faster than him. Let me run. Well, you didn't get the message. I've already sent the message on with another runner. And so what happens? The one who wants to go without a message actually outruns the one with the message. And he gets there and he's like, what's up? And he goes, I don't know. The, guy, <laughs> the other guy's slower. He's bringing the message. He ran interference. I'm not going to go into that tonight. Running without a message. Being sent without being sent out. Listen, people. I just, listen. Can I get you to understand something? The Bible describes church different than what we're living it describes a church as the fullness of God. It describes a church as the manifest person of Jesus Christ in the earth. Not a different Jesus, the same Jesus. Not one 2,000 years ago, but one glorified with greater power and display of the glory of God. And it says the church is the fullness of him and has all of these wonderful outworkings of his glory, of his majesty, of his power. Hold up. I want to be a part of that. I won't stop till it happens. And God just so happened to send me 36 years ago to a place called San Diego, California, and said, watch what I'm going to do. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. By the year 2000, we had over 236, what was it? 200, how many pastors? 250 pastors meeting together. Go interview them and ask them what happened for four years. That was a powerful move of God for four years here in this county. You know, and then the Lord said, look, you know, there's going to be a season. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I walked into a room with that many pastors all gathered together with that kind of momentum, something happening that has never happened in this county before, and said, guys, Papa said, I'm done. Well, what do you mean you're done? No, I, I'm done. He, he wants me to go. I'm headed to Egypt. I'm headed to Papua New Guinea. I'm headed here. I'm, I'm on assignment. I got a new assignment. Wait a minute. You can't have a new assignment. <laughs> Praise God. I had men, I had Holy Ghost men around me saying, you're hearing the voice of the Lord. Do what God says to do. I'm like, come on, people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. But I'm going to tell you right now, I want you to be aware of the time and visitation that we're in right now. Yeah. I want you to understand that there is a responsibility. God has equipped us with the power of prayer. I don't know of any greater power. The power, all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. Huh? Are you with me? Yes. I watch how effective Abraham's prayer was for Lot. I watch how effective, I mean, change the situation. I watch how effective Daniel's prayer was huh, for Israel. Are you listening? Oh, I can go on and on and on. Prayers. The privilege to have an audience, a direct audience, to come before the Almighty God. Yes. When all of a sudden you begin to move in an, a revelation and in the realms of faith to recognize that when you pray, you're standing before, you have an audience, an audible audience with God Almighty. It ain't going to be prayer time no more, people. Huh? This is gonna, that's going to be shocking all. Suddenly now you know the Father's listening to you. You know he hears you. And suddenly now you're going to begin to experience what Jesus has promised and promised over and over again that whatever you ask the Father, He'll do it. Because I try to want to, they try, they want to try to, they want to try to somehow, you know, make that to where it's not 
applicable anymore. It's not as potent as it was when Jesus said it. I'm going to tell you right now, his word is living, it's powerful, it's spirit, it's life. It, it's, the Father is faithful. It's easier for heaven and earth to pass away for than one little jot or tittle, much less a whole phrase, a verse of scripture, to in any way pass away till it's all fulfilled. And that's got to be fulfilled in my life and the generations to come until Jesus comes, until the kingdom is set up. And there's organized differently in the realms of the spirit. But right now, whatever we ask, I can't help it. We're not meeting the conditions. And if there's not the fruit there, it's not God's fault. God demands obedience. There are conditions with everything that Father has promised. He's made an opportunity for an unlimited, uh, an unlimited opportunity, people, for you and me. To walk out of this place burning with the fire of God in such a way that everybody you touch tomorrow comes under the Holy Ghost conviction, falls on their knees, and cries out to God and says, where is it? That, what am I supposed to do now? Amen. And you say something like, well, you're, not gonna go, you're coming to my house to eat with me tonight. We're going to hang out. We're going to spend more time together. And then by the time the church doors open, you're coming to church with me. And we're going to help you all the way through this. Ooh. People want a great awakening, but you have any kind of idea what kind of work ethic that is? I've been in moves of God. I've been in moves of God where you've got hundreds of people to baptize. I'm not talking about tens of thousands of people to baptize. I've been in moves of God where there were, there were lines in Papua New Guinea, and they're coming, and I mean, they're trying, they're trying to get all these people baptized. Praise God, we had, some, we, we had some supernatural help. So basically, all we needed people was come fish them out of the water. Because they hit the water and fall out under the power of God. Baptized in the name of the Father, so I just scream out, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. And then, of course, being with my daddy, you know, when I was young, I mean, the, the, the lines were huge. Can you imagine what's going to happen during an awakening where tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people? The Lord showed me that every, over three million people's houses in San Diego County would be visited by the fire of his presence. Yeah. I remember I used to talk to people, prayer preachers back, about this back in 1994, 95, especially 96, right around in there. I said, no, 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 I've seen the fire of God fall upon every house of over 3 million people in San Diego. Oh, you can't say that. That's unprecedented in church history. You're not allowed to say that. Mark, repent. No, I mean, why can't we move beyond presidents? I'm not saying that everybody's going to get saved. I'm just telling you the fire of God's going to fall on every house and visit every person. And God is love and mercy is that exotic. He's rich in mercy. He's rich in grace. He's rich in glory. This is who he is. I'm not letting up. I've heard from heaven. I mean, you hear, you hear from heaven, it gives you strength. You hear, you hear from heaven, you hear the word of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord speaks to you. It gives you strength to run for many days. You eat what, what the food he's supplying, you're going to run for many days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, I'm, people, I'm just saying right now, I've been in places where thousands and tens of thousands of people are gathered together, na whole nation, like Nepal, begging me to stay. Different places in, in different areas. Papua New Guinea, go have a meeting. First night, there'd be just a normal Assemblies of God church, maybe, you know, 50, 60 people. By the second night, that they have the back wall. They've got to take the back wall out. Just that kind of multiplication. I think, and on the different places, different nations, I think, Father, it looks like I'm much more effective and much more useful over here. I mean, if I count up the numbers and the impact, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm missing it. And the Lord will tell me over and over again, back to San Diego. You go back to San Diego. You do not let up. Somebody's got to stand unwavering, unmoving. I'm going to stand like Abraham stood. I'm going to stand for San Diego like Abraham stood. And, there's, and, many, and many people can also, for, as Abraham stood in the covenant as for what God would do is for the nation ultimately of Israel and for change for all of humanity. Come on, people. That's a small thing. It's a walk with a lot of challenges. But Lord, there's 10,000 people here and there's only like not that many there. Oh, there will be. There will be. You let Jesus step into San Diego and you watch what happened. Qualcomm Stadium will be full and you won't have to advertise. You won't have to advertise. Just let Rady's Hospital, Children's Hospital, be cleaned out because you walked through. 
in Jesus' name. He didn't ask for permission. You didn't ask what they believed in. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, and Jesus' name, and Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, there's a wake of healing behind you, and all the cancer patients suddenly hear it, feel a jolt of divine life. Huh? And the cancer's gone. No, 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 no. He's not changed. Holy Ghost says it changed. I'm not talking about a different Jesus. I'm talking about what Jesus did and what he does. And what everybody who ever knew him that gave witness to us in the word of God, what they did. <laughs> it's going to happen. Amen. The Father's going to have it. In, there's, listen, the most holy thing is signs and wonders. Can you understand that? It's the most holy thing. Exodus, you listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. You listen to me. Exodus chapter 15 is the first time God's holiness was revealed. It's the first time holiness was a credit to God. The first time he unveiled holiness. He did not unveil holiness to Abraham. He unveiled holiness first and foremost to, to, to Moses, but he described holiness in Exodus 15 through signs and wonders and miracles. That's how holy it is. People use it, they violate it. They violate it. I can't help that. That's why it's so important for us to understand this basic in our own life, a discernment for our own life. If you don't have discernment for you, how can you have discernment for anyone else? People are saying walking around, they're walking around in love. Are you kidding me, man? We're not talking about your little puppy dog love. Oh, I love Arco prices. We're talking about, huh? I love my wife when she's happy. We're talking about a divine love that's described on the level of what God did for us. No, no, to become the foot-washing servant. He was more than our whipping boy. Do you understand what a whipping boy is in the context of monarchs? Yes. You didn't get your own spanking. Huh? They could run in a boy to get a spanking for you on your behalf. Don't you ever do this again. <laughs> Jesus was more than our whipping boy. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. I pray that goes so deep in you that you can never, you can never sleep bright again. Constantly waking up going, Jesus, Jesus. Don't, oh Lord, use me. Don't refuse me. Oh God, choose me. Well, many are called, but few are chosen. Well, many are called, but few will listen. Many are called, but few will do what God demands. How passionate are you for him? Oh, he loves me. Well, how about you loving him back? When he's filled you with the capacity to love him. Instead of loving your own self so much. Listen, people are always, you know, they're all splitting hairs and trying to figure out what self-denial is. Can I help you? Quit being selfish. Okay, are you with me? You got it? Self-denial, stop being selfish. Impossible for humanity. Humanity is absolutely, it is the human condition. And they are absolutely overwhelmed from every, in every cell of their body with selfishness. With self-preservation. It takes a divine intervention, a miracle, to change that. Filled with the love of God on a scale where his love, his life, more, is more even than a wellspring. It's more even than a river. It's rivers of divine expression. Somebody had said to me, preacher said to me one time, how filled with God do you think we are? Well, I know what the opportunity is. I know what the privilege is. I know what the access is. I know what he's made available to anyone, whosoever will. It's being so full that it comes busting out of you like rivers. I, you can't even begin to describe a fullness of the, to that degree. That is like, a, you're with me. That's, the Lord's, that's like the Lord saying abundant life. That's like using words that you don't, you're, there's no word in the language, human language to use to really describe what I'm going to say, so I'm going to throw it way out there. You can do your own will on his day. You seek your own pleasure. You're going to walk in your own way. Consult Isaiah 58. Find out why you don't have Pentecost. Think about it. The word of God is there for us. Give us divine light and, and insight to understand exactly what God demands. Do we want the church to be the body of Christ? Or do we want the church to just be another organization that's equal to a good Sands club? A presbyter of the Assemblies of God heard me say this one day, that the church has abdicated and it's no different from any other organization within the community that's like a good Sam's Club. He 
said, oh, no, 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 stop. You can't say that. Pastor Mark, you can't say that. I'm just showing me a little respect for pastor. Praise God. You can't say that. I said, no, no, no. I can prove it. Okay. Well, what? He says, his response was, what's the thesis? I said, listen, let's look at the church as it's described in the scripture and let's compare the church as it is right now. Do they match? Okay, if we have to say honestly and objectively, no. Then we have to then say, what is it most like then within our culture and society? That's the thesis. Whose responsibility is that? Mine. Whether you know it or not, yours. And all your wishful thinking, and oh, well, I can't believe it, ain't going to do nothing. It's about you surrendering your life over to God and letting the Holy Spirit come and dominate you and you coming under the discipline of his word. Saying, Lord, okay, I'm going to walk in love. But there's no way I have the capacity to do it on my own. I know I've been born again. I know I've been filled with the Spirit, but I want you to teach me how to do this. And he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna describe lowliness. And he's going to describe meekness. And he's going to describe it in the context of absolute abandonment of your own will and of your own interest. He's going to describe it in the context of absolute abandonment of self-interest and selfishness. When we look at Father, what is he? He's made us one with him, but what is he? Totally unselfish. The giving God. The giving God. You, you can find out how giving people are when you receive an offering. This is a giving church. That's why we were Bible church. I'm, I'm, I'm just so blessed for you guys. I'm just, for me, this is the best church on the planet. Yep. Look, you know, come on. That truly is. I know I'm not living as a hermit life over here in some little cave with some little tunnel vision. <laughs> I, mean, I get to go to a lot of different churches. Are you with me? It's amazing. Is said Robo and get us to be no more today. Huh? But it isn't what? It isn't the fullness of what the Lord's described. It's still, it's the church in its infancy stages. What's going to make the difference? When we obey the master's command with absolute surrender to leave everything behind, forget about your home and all of your other interests. And come wait on him. Well, how long do we got to wait? Did you notice he didn't answer? Oh, no, guys, you're not, it's, gonna be, not, it's not going to be long. Here, let me break down this revelation for you. I'm going to take you in the scripture, and I'm going to talk to you about first fruits. I'm going to talk to you about Passover and then the development of Pentecost. Jesus didn't do any of that. Preachers do that. Jesus didn't do that. I'm going to let the Feast of Tabernacles be exactly what Jesus described it to be. I'm not going to read through between the lines and make up a bunch of nonsense and then no power of proof to back that up and everybody's sitting there all awed. What? Why? God's giving you the life of his, giving his, his own life to live. You should be awed about that. He's giving you the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to have the Spirit with you and in you, to be baptized, to not only be the temple of God and be so full of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you that's gushing out like rivers, but to be baptized in the Holy Ghost so that all that is around you, you immerse, saturated in the very glory cloud of Almighty God. When was, Pente when was Pentecost ever first witness? When was the glory tabernacling with men ever first witness? Mount Sinai. E Exodus chapter 19. Whoa! That is lesser. That's something less. I was crying out to God. I said, oh God, on the basis of... On the basis of Exodus chapter 20, 20, and I said, Oh God, you came, you spoke to your people with an audible voice. You might put your fear before them that they would not sin. Oh Lord, you're unchanging. Lord, your mercy, oh God, endures forever. Lord, you have no inequality with, with your people. Do it now. If the church needs anything in America, it needs that. Do it now. You remember I mobilized most of you to pray with me. Oh, let's, God, let's ask God to do this. In San Diego. I remember one time when a guy had a church membership of over 6,000 people. He kept asking me to come preach in his church. I said, man, I can't come. I'm standing in the gap for San Diego County. 
And then after several times of him asking me, I want you to come. I want you to preach in my church, man. Come over here. I'm like, and I tell him again and again, same thing. He said, well, what are you doing over there? How big is the church? Maybe I should come over with you. Where, what's your divine assignment? Who are you? Do you even know the call of God in your life? Behold, you were sitting there. I've been telling you for a long time. I haven't heard a thing. I haven't heard nothing. When did you tell me? Exactly. Get your fingers out of your ears and listen. Are you with me? I mean, how many signs and wonders did God got to give you before you believe he's tabernacling with you? That he's in this place. How many things God got to do to convince you? Watch out, because you might not be anywhere near Joshua and Caleb. Are you with me? You might be the straggler, like begrudging to even be moving with the cloud in the wilderness. Oh, I can't believe it. Who's, you know, are you with me? All those signs and wonders and miracles, you think, oh, wow, how didn't they get it? My goodness, after all of that, ten plagues of Egypt, the mighty hand of God, the strong arm of God made bare in Egypt. Then, on top of that, right, the, the, the sea parts, they go over dry land. And then, on top of that, miracle after miracle, and they're still going, where's God? I mean, they're walking under the cloud of God all day long, the fire of his presence. And they're like, where is God? I don't believe in our leadership. I hear Korah's voice today over and again. We also are the holy people of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, Pastor James was asking me the other day about devils. I said, no, no, no. And no devil ever been extinct. The same ones that were here 6,000 years, was there, was here 6, years ago are here today. They bring to people information because they've inhabited so many people's lives, they can give you insight. I know a preacher who could speak Greek, and he, that's why he believed in, in, in reincarnation. I said, no, no, he's a Pentecostal preacher. I said, no, 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 that's the devil, the demon in you, man. Brought you, he brought you familiar knowledge from the other person he possessed because they're intelligent. They can bring information, geological location, geographical locations, rather. They can bring all kinds of information that someone else, even languages. It's pretty radical. Pretty radical that a Pentecostal preacher would believe in reincarnation. You only hear that in the office. You're sworn to secrecy. <laughs> oh, what revelation. Oh, man, he's written so many books. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Now you're all suspicious. Don't be. <laughs> Discerning of spirits. Discernment never actually operates within the realm of suspicion and trying to figure something out. It's just it's not extraits, right? <laughs> oh, no, help us. no, we all got problems over here. I got problems, you got problems, I just want out of the problems. That's all, and the only thing is I want out of the problems, I'm saying the church isn't what's described in the Word. You know what? God in His love and His kindness and His mercy, He works bigger he does, he does, he, God keeps his covenant. He has people that are his spokesmen on this earth. And I'm one of them. He has spokesmen on this earth. He's got, he's got prophets in this earth. He's got pastors in this earth. There may be a whole lot more outside the United States than there are in the United States, but that's a different issue. There may be more happening outside the United States in terms of signs and wonders and miracles and display of the church of Jesus Christ, but that's a different issue. Praise God for what is going on in China. Holy Ghost conviction that's in China. Praise God for the move of God in China. <laughs> Praise God for what's had, what's getting shaken up in Kashmir. How many of you going to Kashmir in July? Hallelujah. That's going to be, that's, that's, that's history making. Kashmir's never been shaken. Kashmir's never been taken. Huh? And you, what an effectual door. Well, did that happen overnight? That's seven years in the making. That's seven years in the making. Almost eight years in the making. I did not lose sight of the vision. I didn't turn here, turn there. Oh, no, he's uprooted. This. He's got his movement again. Can't you just, you know, I, just, I get to understand exactly what, what was like for, you know, in the, day, in the wilderness. Oh, no, we just put up the tent. We just settled. And now the cloud's moving again. This is unbelievable what Moses wants of us. Actually, it wasn't Moses at all. Did you see the cloud? <laughs> no. How would Korah, how would Dathan, how would these guys ever do what they did? How would people ever grumble and complain under such glory? Look around. 
Because in asking, asking the Lord, to say, saying, Lord, uh, John's hand, lift your hands towards heaven. Touch him right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kura stapareya. Now quit running around. Great awakening. Leader of a move of God. Huh? 2041. <laughs> he's just learning right now. He's in, he's in, he's in instruction. He doesn't get it quite, quite readily, but he's willing. John, John, Sam, raise your hands. Where's that right now? Raise, lift your hands. There you go. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. So, Father, I'll write that. You know, look, every one of you on, on assignment by God to come into this place of being valiant, mighty. Amen. Amen. And then no way I'm going to stand by and let you miss out on being mighty. Amen. Amen. Being valiant. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Being Hallelujah. great in God. Amen. Coming into all the opportunities. Amen. That's for you. <laughs> Had a person recently tell me, oh, are you a general? I'm like, man, I'm more like a drill sergeant. <laughs> Get in line right now. <laughs> Shoulders back, you know, whatever. You know. <laughs> but it actually doesn't it work that way. Pastor James, I believe Pastor James is watching tonight. If they ever got the web working, he says, listen, this is what God is going to do. You, the general, we're going to be the captains, and we're all going to gather around in San Diego, and we're going to watch this thing explode. And he's serious. He's yeah. coming right on. I said, no, 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 it don't work that way. We're more on a level. We're on evil, even. We're on an even leveling field here. We all hearing, we all hearing from God together. When you there, when you that in, you hearing to God, you're hearing from God together. When we have to drag you in through the door, you know what I'm saying? We're not hearing from God together. Are you listening? Yes. You just got to be willing to come into this place of being guided and led by the Holy Spirit. Hmm? So that you can hear. You've got to come under leadership so that one day you might hear. It's true. We want everybody to hear perfectly. We want fire on every one of your heads. Like on the day of Pentecost. We want every one of you to be endued with power. And you're going to be. You're going to. All we've got to, because it's not about getting and talking God in anything. He's already given it. The opportunity is there. He said, come on in. But there are conditions. You must do these things. And the order is his love. And out of that love comes this amazing agreement because there comes this amazing servitude, this amazing honor, where you lowliness is defined with the framework of you esteem everybody better than yourself. I'm like, is there anybody you esteem better than yourself? Are you with me? Hey, this is what Bob has called us to do. So we say, we're just teaching the word and bringing people just to understand the simplicity of the word. Yes, exactly. Esteem everybody better than yourself. Submit yourselves one to another. Ain't nobody preaching on that. Practical application many times is, is very seldom heard because that brings revelation of who you are. It's true. That's what Bob is calling us to do. I said, Lord, I want to learn. I want to, I, want to walk in, I want to walk in lowliness so that I can come into a place of such a yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. You know what the Holy Spirit wants to do? He wants to take every one of us and baptize us down into the body of Jesus. For by one spirit are you all baptized into one body. So I said, well, you know, that happened to me long ago. Oh, really? Actually, the context is every time that we meet. Pentecost is supposed to be something every time that we meet. So I'm laying in bed today, and I'm getting ready, you know, to get, come and preach and minister. And the Spirit of the Lord says, cry out. Repent. Believe. Turn unto God. See how the Lord said, repent, believe, call upon the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to sleep. This is just running over and over and over and over. So loud in my head. It's like, forget about sleeping. Repent. Believe. On the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sins. No, repent, believe, be baptized. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You'd think I'd be able to do a little bit better job with it. 
hearing it over and over again. Can you believe that the church, would, Jesus would actually be calling his church to repentance? How dare he? How dare he? I mean, look how good we are. Huh? Look how well we're doing. Wait a minute. Understand the submission of your will tonight to the Holy Spirit to be baptized by him down into the one body. To be ultimately to emerge out of that, to arise out of that as a manifest expression of the person of Jesus Christ in the earth. Locally, first and foremost, people are talking about, ah, globally. Well, give me a break. It happens on the basis of that which is local. Paul is addressing that which is local, confined to one geographical location in Corinth. He's not addressing a global church. He's talking to a church, a local church, which then is moving in that display and ministry responsibility that God had given them. And that is for everyone. The application is for everyone. But it's in that context. Somebody said, well, we the body of Christ. Really? Paul actually revealed body of Christ language and terminology in the context of everybody being supplied by the Holy Spirit and the outworking of divine power. The manifestation of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is given to every man so that every person can profit according to King James, but so that all, so that all of God's people could be knitted together according to the Greek language. A knitting, a divine knitting, a divine supernatural oneness, a supernatural miracle that takes place because you and I are willing to submit ourselves to the Holy Ghost and be immersed down as something called the church, the body of Christ. Where there's no personal identity, there's no personal, you know, agenda, there's no personal ideas, completely under the will of the Spirit of the Lord. Doesn't that sound great? What emerges out of that is every one of you begin to function in each individual in the manifestation of the ministry and the persons of Jesus Christ, the power and the demonstration of heaven, the, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, working of miracles, gifts of healing, gifts of faith, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. The church is so backslidden that we have to say, you know, I want a, a warning, a warning. You might, you might hear tongues and interpretation in the meeting. Don't be alarmed. It should be the other way around. We should be, we should be giving a warning. There might not be. And if there isn't, we in dire need of help here. Warning. There may be prophecies. Warning. There may be spiritual songs singing by the Holy Ghost and also singing by the mind. That's the Greek word. It's a radical Greek word used in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Radical Greek word because it uses the Greek word nous, which means literally mind, not understanding, mind. Or that which is based upon the intelligent information that you can communicate that others can understand. Hey, spirit songs. You begin to sing that way. <laughs> My first love, you are. This kind of love will always be. My first love, oh Lord, to me. My first love, you are. My first love to me. This kind of love will always be. My first love, you are to me. My first love, you are. My first love to me. This kind of love will always be. My first love, O oh Lord, to me. Crystal. Let me see you like never before, my love. Let me know you more and more. Let me see you like never before, my love. Let me know you more and more. Let me see you like never before, my love, my first.
precious love you are. My to throw up on the daily mandu, this kind of love will always be my first love, O oh Lord, to me. Praise God for tongues and interpretation of tongues, because that's where that song came from. And you know that manifestation of the presence of the Lord when that happened, when that came, just the other night. Well, I want that all the time. But the fact of it is, is what God describes in his word is far more than all of that. But unfortunately, we stuck in ritual. We stuck in those things that we can predict. We want to live in the predictable. God's not in the predictable. God is in the realms of the supernatural. It's a place of you and I coming over to such love for him. My first love to me means I'm going to obey him. Absolutely. You know, listen to me. You listen to me. I've heard this over and again, this lie from hell that was propagated by demon spirits. Oh, it's just me and the Lord, you know. I'm just going to bypass everybody. I'm not going to stare at anybody. I'm just going to look at Jesus. Are you kidding me? Your interaction with him is predicated on the way you're willing to take what he gives and interact with everybody around you. Amen. Your interaction with him is based upon obedience, not disobedience, not doing it ever, any, whatever you want, mano y mano. Oh, I'm just going to bypass the church and all the other things that are going on in the mess of the church and just, just see Jesus. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. The Lord predicates your love for him on the way that you love one another. And in fact, he makes it like this, and he says very clearly, he said, in, in John chapter 13, you can't be making it more radical. Of the love that he demands that we have for each other. And the submission that you have to the authority of the church. That's the whole problem that stops Pentecost, right there. That's the whole reason the church can't move into Pentecost, until we just grinding at the meal. Eyes plucked out, hair cut off, grinding at the meal. Oh, God, strengthen me, yea, strengthen me, oh, Lord, once again. Maybe at the best, strengthen me. This is so God raises up leaders to say, come, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come learn my way. Come submit yourself to my way. Come do it my way. And here we, then, here we are. We're at that crossroads. Are you going to give yourself over to the love of God? the love that is in Christ Jesus. Because it's beautiful. Anything that the Holy Spirit does, anything that God creates is beautiful. The flowers are beautiful. They're bound by, they're bound right now. You understand? All creation groans and travails right now. <laughs> they're bound under the curse. But they're beautiful. His sunsets, beautiful. His stars and the planets and everything obeying his statutes and judgments and ordinances and decrees unto this day. And if they didn't, uh-oh, we would cease to exist. Come here, man. Come. Father's saying, come. Come unto me. He said, come do it my way. Come bow the knee. What if the Lord started preaching to you as he's done to others? That you are Belites. And you're no different from the Belites who said that, who went up to the temple and served God. That would be pretty harsh, huh? I, I didn't get invited back. I mean, I, I go out to different places. I get, I get some pretty radical sermons to preach. Like, you are false witnesses. And everybody in the house is preachers. Well, how are you going to gain any headway with that? And it's about gaining headway with that. It's about obeying the Holy Ghost. Of course, in Norway, with all those preachers, they all broke. They broke, eh? Elizabeth's sitting beside me in Norway, right? And, you know, they're doing the ritual, you know. It's Lutheran, right? Everybody's a Lutheran kind of thing. And I was in the Lutheran church with Lutheran preachers and Lutheran, I mean, retired Lutheran preachers, active Lutheran preachers, burnout Lutheran preachers, preachers' daughters, preachers' wives, preachers' Lutheran uncles, and pre all preachers. Everybody's a preacher somehow related to a preacher. And, the, and, and, and I'm just overwhelmed by the presence of God. They're lighting the candles. I'm just sitting there overwhelmed by the presence of God. It doesn't bother me. It's on one side and it's on the other. I was feeling good. Norway's beautiful. I'm just in there just overwhelmed by the glory, you know. I wasn't like aggravated. They're lying candles. When are we going to get on the program? I'm in the program. Like, what are you talking about? On with the program. I'm just saturated. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost over here. I'm watching them light the candles. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm getting ready to light them up. 
and I got this big smile on my face. Ooh, this is going to be good. And then I get up to open my mouth, and the Lord says, you are false witnesses. And then he gives me all the scriptures to preach. The evidence was laid out. The proofs were given. The Holy Ghost conviction was there, and hearts were responding. And then big old Vikings. God read their, everything of their heart. I've been a false witness of the resurrection. Start confessing sin. I've been bound with pornography. <laughs> Letting it go. Revival's come to the house. Amen. Not just running in retreat. I'm, I'm older than he is. He's an American. People in Europe don't really take. No. People in Europe don't like you, man. I promise you. You're way too arrogant. Who do you think you are? Get out of here. Already, that's already what you're up against when you're in Europe. And nobody wants to listen to a thing you've got to say. So it's already another miracle level when, you, when that breaks through, when you break through. God's going to use Joshua in a radical way in Europe. It's going to happen. Europe will be lit on. God's going to raise up people out of America you know, with a bunch of donkeys to them, as it were, and light the fires of revival in Europe. Amen. 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 Come on, come on, guys, sit down. Wait, wait. Let your hands towards heaven. Wait. Sit. Let's just do it. What are we going to do? Submit ourselves completely to God and be conformed to the image of Jesus. What does that look like? All lowliness and meekness. I'm going to read a couple of verses of Scripture to you, okay? Yeah. Just because I want to drive this home. I mean, I've been giving you the Word of God. hope you understand that. I've been speaking in this oracle of the Lord. hope you understand that. But one other thing before I start giving you these verses of Scripture real quickly. We're going to... I'm not, I'm, we're, going to we're not going to only be in the safety of an elementary school in these different zip codes. We're going to mix it up with being outside for a month in some places. And James, you're going to start leading a crew of people to find the parks that we can get permits for. Why well, you can still get permits. Because the demonic agenda that is now being advanced in a very rapid way, and especially in the state of California, is that we won't have permits because we will be actually domestic terrorists for telling homosexuals they're on the way to hell just like the adulterer, huh? And just like the pornographer, and just like whatever else, we're going to warn them to flee from the wrath of God, and you start to down, you know, you domestic terrorists. But the fire of God's going to fall. Yeah. And this is only going to happen through people who are not going to count their life dear unto themselves. Yeah. Thank you, Father. You know, my, my wife... The body of Christ is wonderful. Being under authority is a beautiful thing because until you're under authority, you'll never recognize the authority of Jesus. That's, that's the message. And my wife was raised in La Jolla in a very plush kind of a environment. I mean, you know, the house that she was raised in, her mother's still in it. It's beautiful. I mean, overlooks all of the, you know, you can see from downtown San Diego, all, you know, Ocean Beach, Pacific Beach. It's beautiful. And all she, she was very, you know, set within that framework of thinking, raised a good Catholic girl, Roman Catholic girl. You know, thought she'd grow up be a nun. I mean, she was a little special. And I started ministering to her and teaching her on the principles of walking in the spirit and living in the realms of faith. She didn't understand that. She said, baby, stand behind me. Just stand behind me. You don't have to stand out here in front. You don't even have to stand beside me. Stand right behind me. You'll be sheltered from it all. Just leave it to me. Can you trust me? Yeah. One night we were driving home, home in the fog. And I was driving a little fast and I could see her. She's over nervous. Real nervous. She's just real nervous. I know, you know. We're driving a little too fast in the fog. I gave her an avocado. I said, hold on that. <laughs> and it's so, it, it, it just was so funny to her that she would have an avocado to be comforted with while I drove fast in the fog. <laughs> sometimes I say, just hold the avocado, okay? It's going to be fine, no problem. 
And she gets, she relaxes. She relaxes. Okay, we're getting ready to step out big here. What are we going to do now? She's not there anymore because she lived under that place of being under authority. She lived in that place under authority that now she's launched out in authority. She's telling me, she's telling me scary stuff. I'm like, <laughs> is that what we're supposed to do? I mean, she stretch, there's things that she stretches me in now. She just stretches me. I'm like, okay, I'm hooking up with your faith. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Why don't you come learn this? Why don't you come get in the body of Christ? Why don't you be perfectly joined together in oneness? Perfectly joined together in purpose and heart and mind and spirit. Per perfectly joined together in direction. That's what Papa demands in terms of the prerequisite of Pentecost. I want Pentecost every time. There's a miracle that can be supplied. Father's got a miracle available where the Holy Ghost takes us and baptizes us down into one body. It's a miracle. It's not a one-time event. It's not a one-up event. Are you listening to me? Being born is a one-up event. Praise God. Are you with me? You don't get born again every day. But drinking is not a one-time event. Eh? Uh-huh. It's not. And the Lord makes it very, very clear of being filled and making it equivalent to baptism is a continual ongoing event. To be continually filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Hallelujah. Some of the guys that I get to grow, got to grow up under, you know, and, and was mentored under and, and whatnot as I'm growing up in the church, says, hey, and it, was just, it was real simple. You want to be full of chicken? You got to eat chicken all the time. You want to be full of the Holy Ghost? You got to be filled with him all the time. Just that simple. Just good, good country <laughs> preaching. To be continually filled with the Spirit, to be baptized, to begin. Every church service should be a day of Pentecost. I'm living in the time of Pentecost. I'm living in a time where God the Holy Ghost is allowed in and is allowed to take over the whole meeting to where that Christ Jesus is the head and that in, in, in His headship and leadership now we're able to grow up into Him who is the head. But we've got to be willing to let God take the lead personally in our individual lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Otherwise, it's never going to be reality when we come into this meeting. If you're fussing and fighting in your home, you're going to fuss and fight in church spiritually. If you're hollering at each other in the house and that kind of strife's going on in your house, you will bring strife into the church. Wake up. Those demons don't just act activate your life at home. They're running, they're running over top of you. They bring all kinds of stuff with them. You hear me? I pray you do. What Father's invited us into is so much more beautiful than all that stuff. Why should we want to live there anymore? Jesus says, come and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly. Here you'll find rest in yourself. Here's how it works. No, no, no. Look, Peter, you don't understand. I'm going to wash your feet. You've got to receive this kind of ministry from me. Because the only reason you don't want me to wash your feet is because you're afraid you're going to have to wash somebody else's feet. You and your arrogant self. Are you with me? Yeah. I mean, he just dresses the heart. Are you going to be a part with me? Are you going to do what I'm doing? Are you come follow me? When I was little, we had foot washing services. But it, the spirit of it got lost. We had foot washing services like you had communion. That doesn't even... You don't even know what that is anymore. That's so foreign. That's, that was every, that was as common as, as, almost as common, especially in the Pentecostal movement. It's almost as common as communion. Where do you do that anymore? You have to make sure you didn't have holes in your socks before you went to church. You make sure your feet were clean before you went to church. Huh? Stink up the place. Huh? You got smelly feet, you put powder in, shoe powder in your feet. So you won't be embarrassed when you pull your shoes off. Pentecostal movement. This is people we are. We the people of the name. We the people of the kingdom. We the people of the spirit of the Lord. Something's got to change here. And all the, all, what needs to change is our willingness to, to love him. To let him be first love. Then you're going to obey him. You're going to submit in every way to him. And that's going to be too hard for you.
How's your body doing? It's doing better. Yeah, it's, better. it's doing better. I promise you. It's doing better. I feel it right there in my hand, right there. I feel, I feel better in my hand right there. Put your hand on your chest. I, mean, I feel better right there in my hand. Mm. You know, when you have something come up like that, some kind of a lump, and then, you know, the preacher tells you, you don't, need to, you don't need to go see the doctor, you're fine. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. Then you got all these questions going on back and forth. You're not under submission, you're not under authority. It ain't going to work for you. You're not connected with the head. I'm not going to preach on that. I'm not going to preach on that because that's, that's advanced. That's deciding that you're going to love Jesus and walk with him. First, love Jesus and be loved by him. And let him fill you with his love. Loving Jesus is being filled with his love. You cannot give me a false description of the love of Jesus Christ because I already got the right one. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Don't give me no false description of the love of Jesus because I already got the right one. I see what he did. I understand what he did as it's described in Philippians. Are you with me? As I've quoted already to you. As we see the cross of Christ, as we see in Bethlehem in the major, we celebrate every year the incarnation. There was no room for him in the world of men. He had to be born with the cattle. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, the mind of Christ helps you to sort out all the false motivations. Listen, I'm going to keep you under the word tonight. I'm just going to keep you under the word. Hey, no, this, can, I, can I have just a minute? Yeah. Was he going to change the diaper or something? Father, touch him right now in Jesus' name. Strengthen him, Father, to like what mom's doing and to like what we're doing in church. Strengthen him right now to be able to sit still for just a little bit. Amen. Just sit, sit still. Where's his little cot? So he can lay out. Lay out. You can fall out under the anointing right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Anything that... His dad and his mom and I tell him to do. He's going to do it. Amen. Ultimately, he's just going to do it. Amen. John, Sam, is there anything that you don't trust us in? <laughs> you feel like we're going to lead you astray? <laughs> Ask you to do something different than what God says. Word. People, I'm going to tell you right now. Go listen. Go listen to tapes. You can go back to long ago. There's tapes. You won't have anything to play them on, but there's tapes. <laughs> I just quoted the Word of God to you. I just declared the Word of God to you. And then everything that I've done beyond that is just all about laying hold in the realms of faith to go after seeing the kingdom of God advance and souls reach. That's it. Okay, now we're, in other words, I've preached the Word of God to you and said, okay, now let's apply the Word. Let's do it. Let's go get this thing. Lift your hands towards heaven. Right now. Come over here. She has something to say, too. She ran out of words. Let me just, I'm just going to read a couple of verses of Scripture to you. Romans chapter 15. Let's just, let me just start there. Verse 5. Now the God of patience and comfort, who is he ever patient and comfort? Grant you to be like-minded one towards another, to have the same mind, to, be, to, to treat one another in the same way, according to Christ Jesus. God grant you. This is the condition. I'm just going to say it over and again. God grant you to be just like Jesus in the way that you treat one another. 
in your commitment up front, you're already committed to doing it, and then in the action. Just how Jesus Christ treated you, Calvary. What he did when he laid down his life for us. That you may, with one mind and with one mouth, glorify God. What oneness? Oh, we're just all excited about oneness with God, and we should be. We should understand the mutual indwelling. Lift your hands towards heaven. The mutual indwelling. Come sit up here. The mutual indwelling. Huh? Being privileged to receive what he has for us. Amen. Huh? And an unlimited fullness. Out of that, we should be able now to be one with each other. Yes. Father's asking it. Amen. Impossible without the Holy Ghost. You don't have your opinion. You caught away in heaven. Amen. I don't have my opinion. I'm speaking in the world of God. I'm caught away in heaven. I'm not sitting here being a judge of critical thoughts and ideas and concepts. Look at this beautiful spirit of heaven. Look at this. That you may with one mind, with one mouth, glorify God, even the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another. This is how, you, this is how we're supposed to interact with each other. Anybody walks into it, we're supposed to receive each other. Look at here. On the basis of what and just like. Huh? As Christ also received us to the glory of God. Powerful, isn't it? Go quickly to Ephesians chapter 4. Quickly to Ephesians chapter 4. He's in chapter 4, verse 1. Here it is, people. Touch him right now, Lord. Touch him right now, Father. In Jesus' name, touch him. Touch him, Lord. Touch him right now. Touch him. Amen. I, therefore, the prisoner. Listen to this. Listen to this language. Listen to this. I, therefore, the prisoner. Paul's either calling himself a prisoner or a slave of Jesus. Which one are you? Good. Didn't be both. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, beg you that you walk worthy of the vocation. Wherewith you are called. Listen to this. I, I love the verse of scripture in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. You hear me quote a lot. Oh God, count us worthy to fulfill all the goodness of your good pleasure in our life with the work of faith and power. That we may be glorified in you and you be glorified in us. Count us worthy. He's saying, walk worthy. This is the place of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. This is how you're going to walk worthy. You're going to come into a place where God the Holy Spirit will have rule over your life. You will come to a place where nothing can distract you from what I'm saying. You'll become so hungry and so thirsty to have this. You'll be on the edge of your chair. This is what God wants to bring you to. It's true. Thank you, Jesus. And he's and he's good. He's long suffering and patient. Amen. And mercy. Mercy is mercy. Knowing that the fair forbearance of God huh, and the long suffering of God, and the goodness of God. Leads you to repentance. Thank you, Father. He's amazing, eh? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've always been amazed at how God wrestles with people. He doesn't write them off. He wrestles with them. In the, in the wrestling, God never walks away. You walk away. But he'll wrestle with you till you either submit or you walk away. It's amazing to me how he wrestles with men. You don't have to wrestle with me. I'm yielded. Push me over with a feather. Come on now. I'm talking to you. Says the Lord. You want to walk worthy of this vocation? What is your vocation? To be filled with the Spirit? To be baptized in the Holy Ghost? To be witnesses of the resurrection? With a demonstration of power and faith? Jesus manifested in your mortal body. Should I go on? All of these things that describe what it means to be born again and what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, what it means to be set apart to God, sanctified, the holy ones, the temples of God, walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. This is the life of the Spirit, living the life of God. He's saying walk worthy of that. This is what you've got to do in order to have this, to be, 
to be yielded to it, to, to be in, the, in step with him, if you would. Here's what he says. With all lowliness. Hopefully we've described lowliness to you tonight yeah. and the benefits of it. You got to be trained in it because everything in your life is against it. Everything you've been taught is against it, except for the Holy Spirit. Everything you've been taught, everything in your life culturally, everything that you've learned culturally, everything that you hold on to that you believe, all you are is shaped in the image of men. You don't have one original thought. I hate to break the news to you. You've learned all your thoughts from somebody else in the culture that you live in. You don't have one original thought. Not one. All you are is just miming what everybody else has programmed you to be. And God's given you an opportunity to get out your prison. Amen. He's given you an opportunity to come over into this wonderful life where now we're living in his thoughts, his word. We're living by his spirit. Instead of just being puppets. Huh? Being just simply a reproduction of a society and a culture that is against God. With an anti-Christ agenda and an anti-God position. Time the church to rise up. That sorts it out right there. It just sorts it out. That's the win. It sorts out the chaff from the wheat. That's all it is. It's true. It's true. With all lowliness. I mean, you know, the thing about it is you start walking in love, people always being offended. You walk in love, you have no offense anymore. That's why love covers a multitude of sin. People persecute you and you blessing them, right? Left and center. You love them. They hate you, you love them. You know what? You're over here captivated by this wonderful love of Christ. Look at the love of Jesus, who became guilty for our sake, who did all that he did, who stepped down truly from the throne. People have got such high opinions of themselves, they won't even step down from their own opinions of themselves. What are you, come on, are you listening to me? Now in Jesus' name, that old cough gets out of you, buddy. That gets off of you now. And having no right, I'm have to pull my belt off. And not having no sickness. I love you guys with all of my heart. Watch what God's going to do with you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. With all lowliness, with meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, bearing, bearing the things that you have to deal with or whatever, but it's not even an issue. Look at how he's bearing with us. You know, it's the case of $10 million versus 10,000, right? The $10 million, the Matthew chapter 18, 10,000 talents, each talent being about, roughly about 1,000 US dollars versus 100 pence, which is basically one third of a year's salary. Put it at 10,000 bucks. 10,000 versus 100,000, uh, uh, forgive me, 10 million. The Lord forgives us 10 million. And then we go grab our fellow servant by the throat and say, pay me 10000 And we should have been living in the overflow of the joy of having all of our debt forgiven. Then we just go around forgiving everybody. The Lord's given us the capacity to walk in that kind of, I'm overwhelmed by the for, my, of how I've been forgiven of my debt. I'm overwhelmed with his love and mercy for me and the forbearance towards me. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's a place of mercy. Love is a place of mercy. Love is a place of forbearance. Love is a place of long suffering. Lo love is a place of lowliness. Because when you've been loved by the mighty, it humbles you to nothing. Yeah. Are you listening? You've been loved by the almighty like this? How can you be par have partiality and preference in love? No. You can't. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and bond of peace because I'm going to tell you right now, without that, without that, you're not having Pentecost. Without that, you're not yielded to the Holy Ghost. Without that, you're missing the, the ingredients of Acts chapter 2, verse 1. They all gathered together in one place. Why were they there? In obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ to wait for the promise of the Father, said he. Hmm? You should, be, you should receive power from on high. You should be endued with power from on, on high. The promise of the Papa. They all gathered together in one place. Every time. Pentecost, every time. The flow of the Holy Ghost, every time. Everybody captivated. I know mamas, you keep holding your babies. Look, I know how to hold on to them and be captivated at the same time. 
<laughs> Bring them with you. Send them taking you where they are. When things get bad, don't blame it on God. Blame it on your disobedience. But why should you be stupid? Why'd you, why should you have to wait and prove that your disobedience is going to result in disaster in your house? Why should you wait? Don't wait. I'm going to read a couple more verses of Scripture. I'm going to get my computer. Just everybody stand with me. No, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm doing this only because I can feel the pull to go. Here, here, listen. Here, listen to me. To receive the revelation of God, to begin to move in divine revelation, you got to labor for that. That's a pressing in. It's something that we do together. It's not the restlessness. It's the rest. We, we, we just get in here and we begin to labor together in these things. We're willing to spend a long time with the preaching of the word and being bathed in the word and the spirit. Revelation is going to come. Amen. You need to get, I'll just tell you right now, you need to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You need to contend. Lest the promise being left you, any of you should come short of the rest. I know. Somebody said, oh, he's blending scriptures. Well, I know. I'm on purpose. I, I know I jumped from Jude to Hebrews. I understand that. I'm call, God's calling out to you. Did you know that in, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, I just read to you the virtues of love? I read to you the fruits of love. Don't tell me walking in the love of Jesus that those virtues aren't there. But I can, I can promise you this. You may tell me, I want those virtues to be more expressed in my life. And I give myself over to it. Could you help me understand how to yield to that realm? Yeah, I can. I can help you even in the dynamics of what's going on in this meeting right now. God wants to teach you to be instructed. I want you to come to a place where you're willing to be taught by him. Teach you to be taught by him. To be instructed by him. The virtues of love. My first love you are. And I, the Lord just receives that. I, but I watch the people that, whose hearts are really there more impacted by it. They're more impacted by it. They fall out onto the floor. They're weeping. So I said, why did they fall out on the floor and weeping? Because they truly are in to him being his first, their first love. There's already the action and activity and the discipline and the yieldedness. And I just want it, personally, I just want it to be deeper, me. I want my response to the Spirit of the Lord to be far deeper than it is, far more emotional than it is. You have to decide for yourself what you want from God. Then you, have to do, then you have to decide whether or not what you want from God is even anywhere written in the Bible. <laughs> That's the other part of it. Because as a pastor, I've watched and witnessed many people, they, got, they want something entirely different from God in a relationship with the Lord that is unique from anything that's written in the Word of God. They want to be justified in a state that has the fruit, their own fruits, the fruits of humanity, of what they believe and what they think is proper and right and good, not what God says. But here's the deception part. They try to make what they want equal to what God wants. That's the deception. There can't be revival there. 
Revival comes to the place because you're crying out, we're crying out, bend me, oh God. I want to be broken before you. That song that we were singing, I love that song. Mold me, make me to this perfect offering, to be perfectly this perfect offering. You know, when we start singing that, I'm not singing it. I'm praying it. I'm crying out to God, Lord, this is what we want. And I praise God for everybody here today that you're fasting with me, fasting this day, praying, pushing in with me. Come on now. This is a devoted, separated, set-apart time. One day out of the week to give ourselves completely over to crying out to God for our lost and dying world, beginning with San Diego, beginning with our own home. It's like Ruth Deanna prophesied the other night. People need to learn how to war with the cross of Christ. What power! Where you embrace the cross. I mean, embracing the cross, where you, you crucified with Christ. There's nothing comfortable about this. There's nothing accommodating about the cross. And nothing soft or smooth about it is splintery. Yeah, yeah. If you even feel those splinters by the time you have to deal with all the other issues, pains, yeah. co everything contrary to you. Are we going to have the gospel that is preached by the word of God or are we going to have a modern day post-apostate gospel? Because it, uh, under, unfortunately, people, this, this, it's like, this, it's like the, of the prevailing thought of the world is moving people in one direction. It's what you call trends and fads. Crazy trends and fads. Remember those, like, what were they, clunkers? Or what were they? Remember that thing? What were they called? Is anybody getting it? Anybody old enough? It's like the craziest trend. What were they called? Kachik, kachik, huh? What? Not like whatever they were. I mean, this like becoming a trend. Frisbee. Okay, let me just go with Frisbee. See, everybody's looking at me like, what was that? That was ancient time. It's just like one thing after another, these little trends. Everybody's in. It's like, wow, man, that's just like, you know. Why didn't I think of that? I could have made a lot of money. No, it's just this prevailing thought. You think every thought that's coming through your mind is the Holy Ghost? Boy, we would love that. We hope that, pray that for you. But you've got to be able to discern the difference. And how are you going to discern the difference? the Word of God. Not because you read it, because you came under the rule of it. Then you have to ask yourself, are you part of the glorious church or the rebellious church? In other words, if somebody tells you you're not under the rule of the Word of God, are you going to say that's not so? Then you are, if you do, you're categorically the part of the rebellious church, not the glorious church. And you have to just deal with that. You have to deal with that. Because if there's lowliness there, you're going to say, yeah, I don't want that. I didn't know that. Help me now. You know why the Greeks hated the word lowliness? Can I tell you? Because to them, it was worthlessness. It was defined as worthlessness. Stand in front of the presence of the Lord and see how big you feel. Stand in the presence of His holiness and see how wonderfully important you feel to yourself. That's the problem. We've had religion with no presence. We've had the Bible with no spirit. We've had ideas of Jesus with no encounter. I don't, I'm careful, I'm careful with building out, as it were, a definition of what's so much imp so important if you're going to walk in this place of, as a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and use the terminology lowliness to build it out with the example of who Jesus is and what Jesus, uh, what Jesus modeled. People, this is what, who the Holy Ghost is. I'm very, caref I'm, very, I'm very careful not to use the word until it's fully understood or trying to make people fully understand in the context of Jesus' lowliness, brokenness, then I use the word as it's understood by the Greeks. Worthlessness. And really what it comes down to is you have no value in yourself. That's close to having this mind of Christ, to having the mind of Christ, the mind of the Spirit. To let this mind which was in Christ Jesus be also. Notice the word let. That means the Lord makes a condition on what you're willing to do. You have to be willing to will it. If you don't will it, it ain't going to happen. 
If you're not going to will it, it won't happen. Sometimes, you've had to, sometimes we have to say, Lord, I don't understand why you value this so much. <laughs> I don't understand why this is so important. But because you said so, I want that. I'm going to do that. Now, I don't understand how that works. Will you please teach me? I promise you, Papa's going to hear that. He's going to answer that. The work of grace will begin to perform in your life and something that has just been, that has become rare. I will be a repairer of the breach, a restorer of the paths uh, to dwell in. I will be a part of raising up the ancient ruins of the church. I will not let you intimidate me. I will not let you bully me. Come on. Come on, St. Bernadine. Because that's what the Antichrist spirit's doing. It's all over the place. Antidot doesn't hold it corner on that. I've watched that spirit work in the midst of the church. I want what he has, and I want to lead people into what he has for us. And I want you to get passionate about it. And if you have fellowship with me, then you have fellowship with him. And if you don't have fellowship with me, then you don't have fellowship with him. Somebody said, that sounds terrible. I'm just quoting scripture. I'm just embracing it. That's what John said. And I'm with John. I have fellowship with John. In that sense, you know what I'm saying. I'm around the Johns of the modern day. Amen. Amen. And we want you to be around the Johns of the modern day. And we want you to be called into the room when the dead is to be raised to life again. And we want you to be called into the room when it's time, for, you know, to break bread. You, you get in that because of what you, in your interaction with Papa, nobody has any other reason. I want you in. You're in. I want you all the way in. I don't want anybody left out. I want me, I'm going to say, no, don't leave, no. Don't leave Kelly about in the hall. He's with me, man. Don't leave your name out in the hall. He's with us. Don't leave him out in the hall. Bring him in. There's only so much room at the table. There's only so much room at the table. Praise God, he expands that table and makes room for the, for the person who's willing, who's passionate. Look, he says to the woman, at the, he, says, this is Syrop, he, says, he says to the Syrophoenician woman, there's no room at the table for you. She's like, make room. Are you with me? <laughs> There's no room in the table for you. I'm not sent but to the lost, lost sheep of Israel. I can't get the dogs, the children bread. There's no room at the table for you. Ah, uh, but I can be under the table. The dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Key word, master. Key word, master. Context. Recognizing his authority and who he is. It's time that the church recognizes the authority of Jesus Christ. And he becomes master. Mas sovereign. Sovereign. Oh, when he's sovereign king, you're not doing anything of yourself anymore. Prisoner, slave of Jesus Christ. What a privilege. Mm. Common expression in the household of God. Owie. I don't want to. Please no. It is ama isn't it amazing how much Papa loves us? Yes. Could you put yourself in his position for a moment? Right, can you put yourself in his position for a moment and deal with you? Could you just do that for just a moment? Put yourself in his, in his position and now deal with you. I just fall to my knees when I do that. It's like amazing mercy and love of God he has towards me. Be with me.
I'm trying my best to get this out of my mouth. Turn to Colossians 2.15. Just real quickly. Just listen. Just let me soak. This is just please. Minister to me a moment and let me soak just a little bit longer in the word of his presence. I don't mean to inconvenience you. But just let me, let me, let me be here tonight and let me be here tomorrow night and, and let me be here the night after that and let me be here the night after that. And let me be here every night. And let me, and from the rising of the sun to the time that it goes down, uh, let me be one of those people who stand in the house of the Lord. They, you who stand in the house of the Lord every day, lift up your hands, your holy hands in the house of the Lord. I mean, I, I mean that's me. That's what, you know, the, the warning of the Lord Jesus. I understand. I understand. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I'm crying out for the church. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't give yourself to doing what the divine assignment is, then you're, going to, you're not going to find yourself being built up and strengthened. You're going to find yourself being weakened because reality of it is, is we're supposed to be, you know, assembling ourselves all the more as the day approaches. And we see the day of apostasy approaching. And we need to be that much more together because of the onslaught of demon power and angelic host of darkness that is against us and if you're not on divine assignment and you're not doing what God commands and you want to do it your own way you will be drifting you're not getting to heaven on your own it took Jesus death and blood his burial his, his descension down into hell his resurrection his ascension up into heaven to even make it possible for you and I to to know him, to make heaven. I want you to. I want the. I want you to let the reality of God break through whatever it is you believe. I want you to get in a disposition where you can receive. God was always trying to bring His people to a place of receiving, and so He'd humble them. He'd put them on the under the strong hand of the Philistines or the Midianites or the Assyrian, to try to humble them because they become so forward in their way, so arrogant. You know what the opposite of loneliness and meekness is? You only got one of two conditions. The opposite of loneliness and meekness is by definition with absolute total agreement by all lingu linguists. Arrogance and pride. You the one or the other. And I know how Father feels, because sometimes we've got to do that. Because he's calling us into a place, and he's saying, do this. And we're like, oh, well, okay, you know, I'm going to try to get around to it. But wait a minute. What does Father say about arrogance and pride? There's absolutely no interaction with God there. Did you know that the Mormons believe they're more saved than you are? You know that Jehovah's believes you're, they're going to heaven and you're not? What makes your deception any better? If it's not the word of God, you deceived. If you're not obeying the word of God, then you're obeying your form of gospel, the for, your form of the gospel, your form of the doctrine of God. And you're not a servant and you're not under the rule. you the ruler. That's arrogance and pride. It's not loneliness and meekness. I'm not my own man. You're not your own person. You bought with a price if you in this. Uh, Ezekiel, come, just come to the altar real quick. Come here. Come here. Lift your hands towards heaven. That's good. And Father, just thank you for the anointing here, Jesus. Thank you for the great things that you're going to do through his little life, Lord. You love him so much. And you can go over there and, you, and sit down by your mama now and listen up because Papa's got something to say. You got to hear it. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Ooh, isn't that big? Elect of God, I got something I get to put on. What do I get to put on? I get to be put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision to fulfill any of my own desires. Oh, wow. Can you hear that? Isn't that glorious? I get to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision to fulfill any of my own desires. I know what the King James says. Make no, provision, no, make no provision to fulfill the lust of the flesh. But actually you can translate it 
and dial it down even more specific to fulfill your own desires. To do your, walk in your own way, to do what you want. I'm not allowed to spend my money on myself unless God says I get to go buy a pair of shoes. He said, oh, that's just deplorable. Would you put some shoes on? I used to wear tennis shoes till they turned into sandals. That was under my daddy's rule because any extra money went to the mission field. Okay, Pops, but you know what? We can believe God for a little bit here while we send some more over there. I promise you, you prayed about where you eat, you wouldn't be eating at McDonald's. What God is doing right now is beautiful. I wish I could tell you everything is happening. <laughs> Ezekiel. Ezekiel, you got a powerful name, son. Lift those hands towards heaven. There you go. Come on, bless us here. Would you just bless us for a little while and enjoy the thing? Enjoy the process. <laughs> Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. And it's just amazing to be elect. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm foreordained. I'm predestinated to this. Yeah. If you want to argue about foreordination, predestination, if you want to argue about whether you want saved and always saved or whatever, I'm like, well, first and foremost, before you ever could be always saved, you got to be saved one time. You got to get saved first. Then we can talk about whether or not you're going to, stop, because whether or not you're going to stay saved. But the Bruce of the Spirit is going to declare whether or not you ever was. I believe I'm, I'm kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Yeah. And nothing can pluck me out of his hand. Yeah. That's a place of submission and obedience to his will where I say yes to Papa. Yeah. I'm in a family and I love him being my dad. And the Holy Ghost, my companion's like a mom to me. Kind of, you know what I'm saying. He's a he. Of course, you can only let him be so much of a he. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just leaving it. Many people, many people who got, many God's people want the Holy Ghost to be an it. I want Father to be an it. And let Jesus be a But I'm leaving that. I'm not going to say nothing else about that. Just forgive me for even bringing it up. Forgive me for bringing it up. I'm going to let Papa be who he is. I'm going to love him. I don't have to understand all the stuff. I just want to, I just want to be a part of the kingdom. I'm in. Hey, looky here. I'm in. I'm all in. I'm not leaving anything out. I'm not like nine pennies for me, one for you, Father. Nine dollars for me, one for you, Father. Huh? Are you with me? Huh? Ninety bucks for me. Here's you ten, Pops. All in. That was the Quakers, really, the Quakers' real argument. Is guys, come on, quit tipping God with 10%. That's law. And that's promise and law. We're living in the fulfillment of the promise and the fullness of grace. We're all in. Don't do anything that doesn't look like you're all in. Are you with me? Come on, I come from a bunch of Quakers. They're the revivalists of the early Americas. Did you know that? When Pentecostals, it was Shakers and Quakers. <laughs> oh, praise God. I have a goodly heritage. My heritage, my, the lines are falling to me in good places. You decide what you're, what, what's going to happen to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, those who are going to follow you, whether they're going to be demon-possessed and assimilated into the God of this world or whether they're going to be mighty in the kingdom of God and be valiant for Him. You decide what you're going to do. But all you're going to do is reproduce after your own kind. I'm going to grab my kid. I grabbed my kids. That's, that's over. I grabbed my kids praying the Holy Ghost, walk around praying the Holy Ghost, and that was, I wanted that more discipline than anything else. Now I'm doing it for my children. My grandchildren, brother. They, they're my children too. Thank you, Jesus. There's an, inter, an insight and understanding of how you deal with children before they come out of the age of innocence. When they still run around, around bare, butt, bare butt naked and don't feel anything about it, they're still in innocence. They can only understand a fraction of what you're telling them. You have to submit their will in another way. People don't even want to learn this stuff. We don't even get time to teach people this because we're having to argue with them about just serving God. 
We're having an argument about stop serving the devil. We're having an argument with them about walking in the fruits of the Spirit. The argument is, you don't have the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, yeah, I do. No, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. That's really a big interplay between the, between the leadership of the church and the church. It goes on. That's the dynamic of what's going on. And, and so much of it is our culture because we think that the kingdom of God looks like a democracy. It doesn't. It's a kingdom. There's no democracy in a kingdom. No monarch ever came and asked your opinion about his next decision. Father is the king of kings. Well, he made his son the king of kings, and when the king of, and the king of kings was subject, will bring all things into submission to all might, to the Father, and then Father will come and be all in all. And the Lord Jesus will give up and hand over the kingdom which he's king of kings on, and unto the Father, and Father should be all in all. Isn't that powerful? Will that stretch your thinking? It does. It's glorious. I don't understand a fraction of it, but I know it's glorious. I can feel it. I can feel it. I don't understand, but I can feel it, and it is beautiful. And I love reading 1 Corinthians 15, don't you? Just kind of read it again. Well, slow down some more. Whew, there's some stuff in here that's going to be impacting me greatly. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. Hallelujah. Death shall be swallowed up of life. <laughs> Man. Woo! I love that. I love hearing about Jesus reigning, bringing all things into authority and submission. Because it's talking to me right now. I get to be first, I get to be first partakers of this. He's ruling over me. He's ruling over me by, by his word. Not a rod, but by his word. And I'm just going to yield to it and submit to it. I want, it. I want that. You can have whatever you choose. God's given you the right to choose whatever you want. I'm going with him. You leave it all behind, he's going to give you everything. More, hundredfold more in this life. And in this life that is to come. Ooh, watch out. Come on, it's going to get big. But people want to be able to have a hundredfold more in this life without leaving nothing behind. It ain't going to happen. You're going to do it. Do you guys know that Chris Graham and Brittany's getting ready, Brittany's getting ready to turn into a Graham? <laughs> Saturday. 1030. This Saturday. Whoa. Talk about launching them out into the deep. Where is Chris? There he is, way back there in the back, a shadow. Get over here, man. I can't see you. We're calling you up right now. Things are changing. Man, I praise God when somebody has uh, the intelligence and the ability that's in Chris's life, and he begins to say, oh, this is nothing. It's all, just kind of all but lost. Let me learn how to walk, embracing the cross. We've been poking at him. We've been trying him. We've been throwing him over there in the hot pan, seeing what we got here. Is this copper, tin, or gold? Brittany says it's gold. <laughs> Amen, I agree with you. The Lord counsels us. You shouldn't feel any other way about it. The Lord counsels us to buy gold tried in the fire. Ouch. You heard... John, uh, you heard Ezekiel going, ouchie. Nothing really happening to him, but that's a lot of what's going on. Gold tried the fire, ouchie. It's kind of similar to embracing the cross. There's nothing comfortable about that. Oh, I really feel good about this. Somebody's telling me, listen, man, I feel checked. I said, no, that ain't checked. That's fear. <laughs> that ain't checked. Because most of what God's going to call you to do, call you to do, you ain't going to feel comfortable at all. And if you mix comfort up with peace, you don't even understand. You have no clue. Because God's going to stretch you. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to feel comfortable when they're taking you to burn you at the stake. Yeah. Oh, I just feel so comfortable. Now, you don't feel no comfortable. You're going to feel checked. I feel checked. I feel checked. I wasn't sleeping. I feel checked about being burned at the stake. Yeah, you do. That's called fear. But get over here and grab a hold of my hand. Let me preach the word of God to you and let you watch what faith will do. Yeah. Faith will drive out all that fear. Faith will cause you to begin to trust in the one who loves you so much. Mind, you'll begin to love him back by the spirit of the love that he's poured into our heart. Amen.
God has poured into our hearts this love by the Holy Ghost. It's not hard, it's easy. It's a discipline, though. It's a surrender of your will. It's the crossroads over and over again where you're going to try to champion your own purpose and your own cause. But no, you, you, you don't defend yourself. That's meekness. Really, that's the definition of meekness. That's why Moses was the meekest person ever. You see it within his life. He doesn't defend himself. God's got to step in. He doesn't ever defend himself. He's beautiful, eh? Because there's nothing to defend. Isn't it beautiful? There's nothing to defend here. I do not have to rise up for my rights. I have none. I don't want any. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm captivated in this, this union with the Father. It's beautiful. Holy Ghost wants to teach you. He's teaching us. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. You cannot get my attention better. That should captivate every one of us. As the premier, the foremost, the most important, the one God decided upon, that's, that should cause us to feel very special at that very moment. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy, and be loved. Boy, does Father give us an identity and let us know who he's talking to. Right over here, Papa. You've got my attention. Come on now. Because redemption has brought us such freedom and brought us such liberty and brought us such empowerment and brought us such mercy and brought us such grace. We're not trying to have to do anything. It's just receiving everything. Boy, I wish I could shout, put that on a recorder for you so you could listen to it for the rest of the week. Bells. The deepest, the deepest sense of passion, bells of mercy. You talk about something controlling you. That's the deepest seat of your emotion. It's the fountainhead of all emotion. That concept is the fountainhead of all your emotions and passion. When you use that word, that terminology, the bowels, the cholea. Jesus said, out of your bowels, out of your womb, out of the deepest part of your cholea. A Greek word which we would actually, once again, transfer, translate as a part of the stomach. From a physiological point of view, but God uses heart allegorically. He uses these different terminologies allegorically. Are you with me? Yeah. Out of your bowels, out of your cholea, out of your womb, out of the deepest part of your cholea, your bowels, your womb, should flow forth. What? Rivers. Rivers are the very life of God. No wonder we can have this. The deepest part of our passion is an emotion. Put on. That means it's an act of my will. It's an act of surrender. It's an act of submission. I come today before you, Holy Spirit, in recognition of who you are and in honor of what you've done. And I fully submit myself to you. Strengthen me now. Somebody asked me, what's the most important thing I can pray for you in, on? That I be strengthened by the Spirit. Because when I'm strengthened by the Spirit, I've got to connect with the one who can give me everything and do everything for me that I'll ever possibly have any need of. So that covers it all. Yes. You too. Amen. You, 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 you. I pray you never forget that. I pray that. Amen. That you recognize the power of God the dunamis of the Spirit of the Lord that is here right now, that people have no time to wait on and be still before. How long will I wait? As long as it takes. I can tell I've waited because I'm renewed. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I can tell I have the might and the power and that I'm fit for the battle, that I will live the life of the overcomer, that I will walk in the realms of being more than a conqueror. Because I've waited. Wait, how long? As long as it takes. I'll break through to the realm. Oh, the better dust to 
You walk out of your house in the morning filled with the Word, filled with the Spirit, it don't take that long once you get into a deeper relationship. You're smiling at everybody. No one's an inconvenience anymore. Everybody's a soul to reach. Come on. Everybody's a good morning. How are you doing this morning? Come on in. The elevator talk, you know. Everybody, elevator thing. One person standing looking into the light saying, that's going to do something. Other people standing there. Ann gets in the elevator. She embarrasses me all the time. This is the day that the Lord is made. <laughs> I'm so happy in Jesus. Isn't God so good? I'm like, yeah, I'm the only, I'm like, everybody else is turning away even more. You know, they're like, so I got to join in. Yeah, praise God. Amen. <laughs> praise God for my wife. I pray that you say the same thing about your wife, that you say the same thing about your husband. Whew. Sons and daughters of the Most High God. Would you walk worthy of that? Sons and daughters. Ambassadors of Christ, the witnesses of the resurrection. Those who stand in Christ's stead. Those who are bringing the, the, the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. He has all power over all principalities and powers and might. But unless you and I will allow that to be revealed through us, no one will know it. Because he's hidden away in us. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did what, Lord? Hidden away in me? Yeah. I'm in you. Because I'm going to give you an opportunity to be in me, hid away in me. That's where the glory is. That's what lowliness is. Oh, can you hear me now, says the Lord? Can you hear what the Spirit of the Lord says? Are you willing to let him empower you? Are you willing to let him show you how? Are you willing to be taught of God? Yes. Bows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind. How do you define that? How do you define humbleness of mind? Understand, I don't go to a dictionary or a lexicon to define any terminology in the scripture. I go to the scripture to define it. There is no place that this defines humbleness of mind as, as Paul did to the church at Philippi. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who humbled himself unto death, even the death of the cross. Have you embraced the cross? Have you embraced the cross? Are you willing every day to... To participate with being crucified with Christ because yes. it's not it's not sequential it happens simultaneously and continuously crucified with him buried with him hid away raised up to give together with him reigning with him it's always going on continually continually intermingled the crucifixion the burial, hid away, the resurrection. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm buried with him by baptism into death. I'm raised up together with him. I'm alive together with him. I'm seated together with him in a heavenly realm. It's always continually ongoing, interwoven. The life of Jesus being manifested in me through the cross. The issue of it being finished, well, it is, it's done. So that I can live it, so that we can live it. Can you do, can you hear me? Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Listen, what am I saying here? This is, this is how you are now available for Pentecost. Without this, you're not available. These are the virtues of love. So I said, I love Jesus so much. I love the Lord so much. Yeah, yeah, you, I know you do, but you don't love him enough to obey him yet. But if you just begin to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, I'm going to tell you right now, he'll show you a love that will cause you to obey him. Not just when it's convenient, but all the time. The Lord said, you're going back to Nepal to me. And I, I, I think he, no sooner did he say that, and I, I said something to my wife, and Sudeep texted me. I need to talk now. I'm in western Nepal. Ain't nothing convenient about that. 
That's my nation. It's one of my nations. I'm going to tell you right now, the Maoists are not going to... The Maoists and their commitment to their philosophy will now not outdo me and my commitment to the cross. Do you hear me? I pray you just come stand over here. Come over here, stand with the mighty. Whose lives are hid away. Huh? For you are dead and your life is hid with God in Christ. So that when Christ, who is your life, not a part of your life or in your life, who is your life, when he appears, then shall you also appear. Listen to all the conditions. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. People, and it's not about, you know, levels and gradations of salvation just a call of surrender <laughs> to the saving grace that bought us to the Holy Ghost who's come to live and rule over us let me ask you this have you ever dealt with the category of where you're tempted have you ever really truly sat down and say here's the category where temptation comes to me and then dealt with it and then taken it to a person who has more spiritual insight than you do, if you can think of one. And of course, pastor just told a joke. Uh, especially seeing as everybody, you esteem everybody better than yourself. Think about it. Or especially go to someone who has the rule over you. If there is anyone who has the rule over you, of course, you know, it's predicated of walking in the Spirit that you know those who have the rule over you. Kind of. That's not what it says. See, we want to have all of the results and blessings of the Word, but we don't want to do those things that are very clearly instructed, which are harsh. We don't like it. We're not comfortable with it. There's nothing in our life that has any similitude of that from birth. Of course, if you were from a kingdom nation, then it would be a little bit easier for you. Who live in a, there's, there's still kingdom nations, you know, that are ruled by monarchs, kings. They are raised with a different kind of mentality, kingdom mentality. It's not a kingdom of God mentality, but it's a kingdom mentality. The transition is a little bit easier. But if you don't really realize and recognize what you're up against, how will you ever be fortified against it? You walk in ignorance and blindness, groping for the wall, wondering what's the problem. Maybe if even in that, even wondering. we got to understand. This is why I love for people to say, stop for a moment. Write down what areas in your life, what categories are you able to be tempted? I asked my wife the other day. She said, cookies. Later on, she told me, you know, one other thing. She said, but, well, I'm really fortified in that area now. It doesn't really have a pro it doesn't an issue. But it's been a place. And you think about it, you just think, start thinking really hard, right? A place where she easily becomes discouraged. And that's a big place for folks. Become discouraged and overwhelmed and, huh? You need to guard against that. Get over into a realm of discouragement. It's, it's wrong. You can't yield to the Holy Ghost there. What's well, yours? I so appreciate Jeremy. He pretty much listed out for me. He said, okay, here it is. I, you know, he listed out everything. You aren't doing it to me. You're doing Papa. I'm just standing in his stead. I'm standing in his stead. I've come on divine assignment to speak on his behalf. And your interaction with me is with him. I don't take any of it personal. Well, I have. But that's, in the Lord's, that's my place of growing and maturing. This ain't about, I mean, I have, the Lord tell me over again, this ain't about you. Get out of the way. Or tell me stuff like, I don't need you to defend me. 
Yes, sir. I pray you can hear from Papa. He just begins by obeying his word. Big boy, is he speaking a lot. <laughs> Humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved. This is what Father wants us, our lives to look like. This is the nature and character of submission to the Holy Ghost, of being a part and a candidate to be a part of the body of Christ, to be baptized by one spirit, to be a candidate of a continual Pentecost. Beautiful, isn't it? Forbearing one another in love. Forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, you also forgive them. I got a problem with you? Forgive them. And above all things, put on divine love to be clothed with it. Later on in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says, be, he says to us, for us to imitate the Lord, to imitate God. And do what? Do what? To walk in love, to, to be clothed with humility, to clothed, clothed with humility, clothed with love, clothed with Christ Jesus, part of the Lord Jesus Christ, Clothed, put on the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost, all synonyms. Walking in the Spirit. See, when I was reading Ephesians chapter 4, what you've got to understand in Ephesians chapter 4 is I'm reading that in the context of something so glorious that Paul just said. You know what he just said? He said that you and I are to be rooted and to be grounded in love. But he said something before that. He said what he wants you to do is he wants you to bow the knee before the Father. In other words, to come into subservience, to come into a place of submission to the Father, of whom all the whole family in heaven and earth is named, so that you might be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being, so that you can be rooted and grounded and settled in love. He's already told us the immensity of what's going to happen out of that, so that with all saints we can comprehend what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, People, it's somehow, it's got to be a treasure. It's got to be more important to you than all your other important stuff. The Lord knows whether it is. And as long suffering, he leads us to repentance. And then you start singing, my first love you are. Something happens. This kind of love will always be my first love, oh Lord. It'll take you to your knees. It'll break you, bust you, bend you. You know, all the great revivals, there was a common thing that people would say. They would cry out, bend me, Lord. Bend me. Bend me. Bend me to your will. Bend me to your purposes. Whatever it takes, may I quit walking it out the way I think it should be done. May I come under your rule and your authority. God knows who's under his rule and his authority, and so does the pastor. I didn't hear a bunch of clapping over that one. If the pastor is a man of God, the pastor is walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, and speaking now the realms of the Spirit, and operating in the knowledge and the discernment of the Holy Ghost, God knows who are His, and so does the pastor. God understands the fruit and observes the fruit, and so does the pastor. The pastor is just absolutely a fruit inspector anyways. Pastor is supposed to be a fruit cultivator. Joined together with the master cultivator. Co-laborers of his husbandry. In other words, how scripture says it. Co-laborers in his building. I just pray tonight and you just grab a hold of these things and submit yourself to God. I know it's hard. I know you have to dethrone yourself. It's a terrible thing. Uh, you have to run a coup against your own self. <laughs> Above all things, have on, put on 
divine love, huh? Which is the perfect bond, the unbreakable bond, the union, the knitting together, being knitted together in what? Love. What happens? You can increase with the increase of God and grow up into Him who is the head. Hear it? Can you hear it? Over and over again, God's saying, this is the place, this is the state, this is the place of yieldedness. It takes us to a place to know the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know the love of Christ, Whew. which passes knowledge. And there, what? Be filled with all the fullness of God. Wow. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above what you could never do, what you could never think above, seemingly above and beyond um, all that you could think or ask beyond all that you could ever but besides if it's beyond what you could think or ask it's beyond anything that you can do are you listening to me yeah. according to the power that is at work on the inside of you but at some point in time you and I have to bend our will to that power you and I have to come under the control and the leadership we have to be submitted to that power it's the power of the Holy Ghost yeah. And the, what the beautiful thing about the Word of God is, is it tells us exactly what He wants and what He's purpose. We don't have to interpret nothing. And when we're willing, Father gives us a great contrast between light, light and darkness. Shadows don't have much of a contrast. Here's what I wrote down by the Spirit of the Lord. I just want to read it to you. The Spirit of Christ is essential in your life. This is the word of the Lord. The Spirit of Christ is essential in your life. Otherwise, the unity of the body, the unity of the body, the unity of the individuals that make up the church is impossible to achieve. You decide. Don't blame it on anybody else. Don't say if there had been more anointing there. There just been more anointing. Are you kidding me? It's up to us to yield to the greatest power that no, 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 no power can resist or stop. And nothing can get between you and God. You want him and nothing can stop him. It's up to you. But here's what the scripture teaches us. You come up here, you're under my will, man. You're on my turf. You wiggle all you want, you can get away. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the way it is with me and the Holy Ghost. I can wiggle all I want, but I ain't getting away. I've been arrested by God. I've been apprehended. I'm compelled. There's certain people that it's woe unto them, which means damnation. Woe unto them if they do not preach the gospel. And those who are such know it. <laughs> it's manifested in their life. Son, son, you want to stand by Papa? Well, then you can't wiggle. You just stay right here. Yield yourself. There you go. That rope is as tight as it could be. Some of you know what I mean. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm just looking at so many verses of Scripture here. <laughs> Every one of them are important. <laughs> Presence so beautiful. Paul writes to the church in First Corinthians, and he says, <laughs> "It's been revealed to me by, by, 
Koloi, that there are divisions among you, contentions among you. He says, because you're worldly. Because that's the only way strife or contention or divisions can be in existence is because you're worldly. I know you little wigwam. Go over there, go over there and wiggle by mama now. Papa loves you, I'm not rejecting you. Just go over there and wiggle by her. You love him, but he's got to learn. He's got to learn discipline. It's tough. Discipline the kids is challenging. I'm just waiting on the Holy Ghost because there's something Papa wants to deliver to you, and you didn't. I'm just going to see if whether or not how it comes out, whether or not it comes out. But you got you have to deal with the responsibilities and your accountability. The Lord says you're going. I mean, He's radical when He describes us that you're. Look, you better have you better have your loins girt about and your lights burning. And when He lays out that parable that you know I read, I gave it to you two Sundays ago. And you remember it. I hope you remember. I hope you've been living in the fear of it, the earnestness of it. The chair is a servant always standing there at the door waiting, waiting that if any moment in time when your master comes and knocks at the door, you're ready. And if you're not, he didn't describe. If you don't have that kind of vigilance, that kind of response to me, look at the consequence. I'm not going to go into that tonight, but I just wanna, I'm just trying to help you to, to deal with some things so it's before you. Father holds you responsible for three different dimensions of your relationship. in this love walk for which we describe the virtues of love and I'm not interested in hearing any other kind of description of love are you with me I want the love that only the Holy Spirit can manifest that is going to result in the manifest presence of God to our lives and here it is here it is you with me listen I don't want to force it out I just let the Holy Ghost speak it out and some of you have heard this from me a number of times, but you're going to have to list it out and make it a part of your life and say, okay, where, where, am, I, where am I being responsible here and accountable? It's your love relationship and the way that you interact and represent Christ Jesus and the things which he demanded of you to your, to your spouse, to your family, to people around you, your siblings, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, family. Important to Papa. If that's not right, especially within your household, your immediate family, you're fortunate. It's just it's you. Are you with me? Yes. You're just basically responsible for you. Wait till you have a husband and, and, and some kids. Then they get harder. You having a problem with yourself? Two hands for beginners. Are you with me? Yeah. Of course, you have a responsibility towards your parents and towards your siblings. It's part of, but then it ultimately becomes more focused down on your immediate family. And if it's not right there, it's going to be right in the church. You having problems at home? Then you need to not quit overlooking that and understand how to get that fixed. And I praise God for the people in this church that call me up and say, look, we're having this issue and this problem. Help us get this fixed. You're not talking to me, you're talking to Papa. And then Papa does that. And, if, and I praise God that none of you have any problems in your home, except for just a couple of you. Praise God for that. Because if you've got problems in your home and these things are out of order in your home, never be, you'll never be in order in the church. Because it's got to work that way. Do you understand me? Yes, yes. This is what the Lord teaches us. And then your responsibility to walk in this kind of love towards one another within the context of the body of Christ, because otherwise you can never, without this, without this kind of submission to the Holy Spirit, there's no possibility that you can be knitted together and be a candidate for Pentecost. You would never be at Pentecost. You would have been one of the 500 that didn't make it. 120 made it. You wouldn't sit it. There would be, you would, there's only so much room at the table. You would have been called but not chosen. 500 were called. 120 were chosen. 120 were there. Do you understand me? You're going to have to list this out and talk to the popple about it. Talk to the Holy Ghost about it. 
and begin to deal with it for reality instead of just, you know, basically brushing it under the rug, acting like it's not there, painting on a smile. Anybody ever seen the glow of the Holy Ghost on a clown smile? No, it's fake. Somebody said, oh, I've got a great act. You know what? Nobody believed it ever. <laughs> no one ever believed it. Father wants to bring you into the acts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The acts of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Man, I feel the power of God, the working of the Spirit of the living God right here. I'm going to lay hands on somebody. I'm looking for somebody to give some of this away. I'm about to explode up here. And then what you got to deal with, I, don't get, I want to try to get loud with this. Is your responsibility in the nature of the way you interact in love with those who have the authority over you? Which God brings down primarily to honor and respect. How do you honor? The gift that God gave you in ministry or the gifts that God gave you in ministry. Apostles, prophets, fans, pastors, and teachers. How do you recognize them? How do you honor them? I mean, I, you know, had the Lord really point out to me my need to be, to, to, to slow down and give more honor to all the ministries around me. I tell you, Pat, Pat will call up to me, call me up all the time. His first thing he say, I honor you so much, you and Pastor Ann, you are such a gift to Karen and I. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And I had so many other people in my life doing that. And I'm thinking, oh, so the Holy Ghost began doing with me. Well, how many people do you do that to? I mean, I honor them, I love them, I show them honor, I'll serve them. But there's also being able to describe it more. Well, did you know that God requires that of you? If you're going to walk in love, I don't know about everybody rushing me after the meeting saying, I honor you, respect. I mean, you, know, you understand what I'm saying. This is, are you with me? I'm getting all quick with it. Let it go deep. Let it soak in. See if you can catch up with that. Because you're going to be held accountable for it. And if I don't tell you, then I got your blood dripping from my hands. Or I'm held accountable because I didn't, I didn't build together with him and I didn't plant together with him. So let's this I give you some homework, okay? I got I've given you some things to get down on your knees and pray about. Because I don't know whether you like it or not, I'm gonna teach you how to live the life of the born again. I'm gonna be a dad in the house. Huh? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to help. And I'm going to love you like a father. I'm going to love you like I do my children. I mean, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't force you. You can, be, you can be rebellious. You can be, you can be sitting over there in the corner when everybody else is sitting up at the table. Huh? Elizabeth. What a what mighty woman of God. There was a period, period of time, though, she was five years old. And I, we was in the ice cream store. And she did a little thing. And I wasn't going to give her. She didn't need as much ice cream as the boys. I didn't think. My judgment of the matter. And I got the boys, like the triple scoop thing, you know. And we gave Elizabeth the one scoop thing. She looks at her, her ice cream. She looks over the boys' ice cream. And she let the stuff melt in the cup. You can do that. You can have that response if you want. She learned really early on in life, you can't manipulate me because I call that demonic. Yeah, you, you start, you, you, my kids, I wanted to honor them all the time when they, when I tell them, no, you're not doing that. And they just go, you know, yes, sir. Okay, dad. And then if, with that kind of response, when they would always had the right response, I'd turn right around and say, okay, well, you can do it then. <laughs> Within five minutes, eh? Five, ten minutes. Okay, well, you can go. Because you've got to respond to it. You're at it. I don't really like what you're going to go do, what you propose to do. But with that kind of response and that kind of attitude, I'm sure that you make the right decisions in that situation. I just wanted to re always reward that. 
You know, it's not hard to do these things if you walk in the Spirit, but if you do it on your own, you're going to blow it. And you, 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 you know what I'm thinking about? It. I, that's the way I thought. My goodness. I'm going to experiment on my kids? What are they going to turn out like? I'm going to experiment whether or not I'm doing it right, disciplining right, leading them right. You know, what, kind of, what kind of monster, you know, are they in the hands of? Are you with me? Well, for me, it's a scary thing. I said, Papa, I can't do this. You got to lead me. You got to guide me. You got to show me. Ain't nobody I know that ever done this successful. Huh? Including the guy who's a host of Talk with the Family or whatever it is. What's his name? Huh? Dobson, yeah, whoever he is. He did. Come on, are you with me? You didn't do the Holy Ghost, not Dobson. Well, I got three books on how to raise kids. Probably going to absolutely, you know, fortify you to do it wrong. Did you call them up and ask them how their kids turned out? Oh, well, I didn't have any. Oh, okay. You didn't have any kids. You're going to tell me what to do. Oh, yeah, well, these are the evolutionary principles that we learned in psychology. Oh. So I'm going to raise my kids on the basis of some kind of evolutionary model. Well, it's true. Watch out what you're reading. It's not supposed to walk in the council of God ungodly if you want it to work out. Yeah. And any council other than the Holy Ghost council is ungodly council. I don't care who they are. I don't care who they are. It doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. Me and everybody else. If it's not God the Holy Ghost, it's wrong. Amen. Live by the Spirit, speak it by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Join hands with everybody in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Now, are you getting ready to go to um, Alaska, right? Have you got your ticket yet? That is awesome. Sam, forgive me. Is the, is, the, is the internet even working or just talking to the... To the... Oh, Jesus. That's another subject. You got some responsibility in the kingdom. You better take it. You better get sharp. You walk in the spirit, he'll show you what the problem is before it ever has to come up. Father, I just thank you so much. When you go there, you connect to them with me, with us, the body of Christ. You connect it with the head, because you connect with me, you connect with the head. Therefore, your hand is just an extension. I got his hand, you got my hand, your hand is an extension. This is the connection. This is, how the, this is how the supply of the Spirit flows to every part of the body. You're not connected, you get nothing. You've not connected, you're not getting anything. And that's the next thing, that's the next subject in chapter 4 that Paul's going to begin to bring up. The connection. But in a beautiful context. And you know how he shows the connection? You know what he's getting ready to say? I didn't get into it because it's getting late on me. You know what he's getting ready to say in Ephesians? He's getting ready to talk to you about the champion, things that Jesus Christ championed for you. You know what he's going to say? When he talks about the champ things that he championed for you, the special gifts that he championed for you, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And what is he going to say? What's the bonus in it? That's where you're going to be perfected. That's where you're going to be built up. And guess what you're going to get out of it? The fullness of the measure, the maturity, the ministry of Jesus, and a fully matured man. And then what is he going to do? He's going to break down the supply of the Spirit and how it flows. People, you can, I mean, it's just amazing to me how many people can read the verses of Scripture and never get it. Why? Because you won't listen. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot hear unless there be someone sent. But what happens when someone is sent? How should they hear the gospel unless there be a preacher? And how should there be a preacher <clears throat> unless he be sent? <coughs> Are you with me? How should they hear unless they have a Bible? And how should they have a Bible unless there be a printing press? No, I'm going to break it down for you now. You break it down for you. You get raw and real with yourself and quit playing pretend. Because there's a huge impact on your life in Christ Jesus based upon how things are in your house 
and then the result of how things in the way you interact in the church according to the virtues of love but there's even a greater impact on the interaction relationship that you have with the authorities that God has ordained you want to look at it at a lower level and want to get it broken down read Romans 13 Romans 13 says he ordained he ordained the policeman he ordained the governor I mean, he ordained all those authorities that are going to make sure that if you do wrong, you're going to get corrected for it. You're going to honor the police more than you honor, think about it, God's ministers, these ministers of his. Hey, you sons of Korah, you take too much unto yourself. Go get your censor. Let's see. Did God love us? Did God love Korah? Was Korah and Dathan and all those guys, were they part of the covenant? God loved them? Were they holy people? Did they have the right to speak on his behalf? Did they have the right to decide? They were privileged to be in. Clearly, they didn't know. You sons of Korah, you take too much unto yourself. Isn't it enough? that God's given you the place and responsibility that he has, should you try also to have the priesthood? Hey? Hey, Geneva, huh? Come on, you were raised in the house of God. You were raised in divine order. You weren't raised around all this crazy stuff. I'm glad some of you get it. I pray that all of you get it. And I'll labor tell you, every one of you get it. I praise God for those of you under authority. I'm telling you right now, there'll be more authority manifested in your life. Those of, the, of you that are under authority, you'll recognize authority. Healed in Jesus' name. Okay, I'm, I'm, I told you, I just, I'm, look, I'm just laboring together with you on something. Why? Because we're going, I'm going to tell you right now, I petitioned God for this, and I hope you aren't upset about it. Lord, let us be your glory cloud in the midst of this city. Amen. Well, there's some serious responsibility to that prayer. Now, if I prayed that in faith, and I prayed that meaning, truly meaning it, then I'm going to get the up to now. And the hot to. And let's get it right. Everybody has the option to do what you want to do. But if you're in, why not be all the way in? Why must we drag you around? Because this is going to be about the lost. It ain't going to be about you. It's about you and I hooking up together as one body in Christ Jesus, flowing in the Holy Ghost with such a powerful display of the Spirit of the living God where there is no weak link, where there is not, no break within the, that bond, When there's no feet, one foot running off by itself, that's scary. We're moving together. One mind. One heart. One, one mouth. The oneness, the unity, that which God will baptize with the Spirit. The Pentecost disposition. The disposition of my life tomorrow morning, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost fresh when I wake up. Before I go get on that airplane. I don't want to get on the airplane. I want to stay here and do meetings with you guys every night. But this is not what we're doing right now. You need to get busy. You need to come under a divine assignment. Don't you live your life this week for yourself, doing whatever you say is good for you to do. You weren't under divine assignment. You didn't follow any orders that God dictated to you. And then you tell me you are part of what God's doing. Are you kidding me? You're lying. Lying, cheating, and stealing. Because you don't belong to yourself. And now you go use yourself or do whatever you want. You just, you, you're not a man of integrity. You bought with a price. You're not, you, own, you have no right. Huh? You, not, who, you didn't ask permission to borrow yourself for a while. To do whatever you want to do with you. Are you with me? Amen. I tell you what, why don't you do this? Why don't, let, why don't you let me... And all the pastors and leaders that, that come alongside me and stand with me, that come through this place, 
Why don't you let us decide where we're going? And why don't you follow? Why don't you let us get harsh with you, speak into your life, and tell you what to do? Then you leave the judgment against us if we're wrong to God, not to you. The Lord says, judge nothing before the time. Because the day of the Lord shall reveal it. And I promise you, I'm trembling in my position before the Lord. You better be trembling in yours. Are you with me? Yes. Bible said, don't let there be many teachers among you, knowing they shall receive the greater condemnation. And uses the word right. Judgment. In a negative sense. They're going to be evaluated more harshly, in other words. Leave that to me. You leave the harsh judgment to me. You let me fear before God. You let me walk before God. And those who are alongside us in ministry. And there's a lot of, praise God for all the people we have alongside of us. I told, I told Pat, I said, where's, I said, Pat, I said, I don't even know where we're going to be, man. Boys are coming in August. I don't even know where we're going to be. He said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, when, when Ruthie Anna called up and canceled on me, I told Karen, we're leaving that place. We're leaving that open. <laughs> we're leaving that spot open. I'm going to go be with Pastor Mark. Amen. I said, okay, well, come, man. I don't know where we're going to be, but come. I said, I'm in. Are you kidding? I might stay longer. Well, I love that. I love that kind of partnership with people that love us, that hear from God. Pat, you hear us from God. We've got a long list of folks that are with us that hear from God. Why don't you let us hear from God? Why don't you walk humbly before your God? Why don't you walk in the virtues of love? Why don't you let us train you in the virtues of love? Why don't you let us tell you when you're out of the picture, man? When your behavior and your, and your manner and your conduct is totally inappropriate. Because if you don't, then you're never going to know, are you? So listen, let's just do it. How is anybody ever going to perfect you if they can't speak into your life? True. And one of, the thing, one of the ways that God has us speak into your life is what we're doing right now. And once again, it's going to build. It's going to build. And there's going to be less of opportunities until we're doing camp meetings. We're going to do some celebrations. With the Campo land that we're getting, I'm telling you, we're going to do Thanksgivings again. We're going to do Christmases again. Everybody got a, we're going to have a hammock hangout place. Hey. We have a place for people to come spend the night. If you want to stay the night, eh? Huh? We're going to do our, we're going to do our, this will be our, the first anniversary that the Abiding Place Ministry will have ever done. And we're going to start doing them consistently. But, I mean, ra that's radical, eh? There's several ways to look at it. You could say, we are actually, based upon our incorporation papers, 34-year anniversary in this. But if you go, when we really just started, it would be 36 years. When we really started, but we weren't incorporated. We were just a bunch of students running around preaching the gospel. Amen. 34, we're gonna, that's going to be big. That's in September. September, I'm going to be preaching. The revival week for the for the leaders of, of Overland Mission in Zambia, and I'm gonna be in Nepal. But at the end of the month, by the help and grace of God, we're gonna be here. It is gonna be we're gonna do like a week camp meeting out at, out in Campo. Look, people, don't get afraid about Campo. It's not it's not desert. This is lush country, man. This is cattle country. I can't help but you to understand Campo based on what you saw on the side of Highway 8. You gotta go inland about seven miles. It gets beautiful. And it's only 30, 35 minutes from El Cajon. It ain't that big. So I said, oh my goodness, you know, what are you gonna do? It's just a two hour and a half drive. I got, I, I, look, it was a 13 hour commute for me to get here. <laughs> James wants, I mean, if I was driving, you know, it's an all day thing flying. I, I spent as much time getting here to, for the meeting as James will leaving the East Coast and he wants to be here every weekend. He wants to be here at least the last two weekends of the month to start getting going on assignment. We're waiting on God how that's going to work. And you're talking about what? You're talking about what kind of a drive? What was that again? Are you kidding me? What? Well, we love all of you. 
power of God. Look, the enriching power of God's word will work effectually within you that believe. It's power. You don't have to live in the crisis and the problems and the issues of your past. You don't have to give them any power over you tomorrow. It can be done. You can say, okay, I embrace the cross. I count all as lost. We've been singing it. Huh? I take up my cross and follow you. I take up my cross and I deny myself and follow you. Of course, we didn't sing it tonight, but it's a great song to sing every service because it's a prayer. It's a consecration and commitment. I don't know whether to address anybody on the web or not. I don't know whether things working or not. Is it working? She says she doesn't even know. Everybody's going, we don't even know. It's off and on. Well, praise God in Jesus' name, somebody's going to get it right. Hey, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people come to church because they have in the church in different places in different countries. And the church that they come to is that web. They get on the line. And if, you, if it's not done, then you know what? I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? It can't be. You can't. You can't. It'd be like a preacher who's a constant backstone preacher. One, one time he's up in, the, up in the pulpit and he's got the fire of God. Next time he's basically, basically he ain't, the spirit of the Lord ain't even there. Are you with me? That'd be terrible, huh? It'd be that kind of a meeting. Get it right, people. Take your responsibilities to heart. Get passionate about it. Let things wane. And that doesn't, I'm not just talking about the people responsible for the web. I don't talking about everything. I mean, come on, I praise God for the people come in here, set everything up. They got to tear everything down tonight. Praise God for your faithfulness. Amen. You get committed. Don't you let somebody else do your work. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God for this team. What a powerful Holy Ghost team. Amen. We're not going to leave anybody up. If we didn't love you, we'd just ignore you. I'll oh, just ignore them. Oh, they're here, but ignore them. No, I'm going to accept you like Christ Jesus accepted you, like Christ Jesus accepted me. You don't think he demands? You need to go read Revelation again. You don't think he puts a demand? You need to start back in Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, and read it again. I'm going to accept you like Jesus Christ accepted you. I'm going to be a shepherd. I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to make demands of you according to God's word. And you should love it. Sandy loves it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jeremiah loves it. Crystal, look at her. She loves it. <laughs> JPS loves it. John loves it. You should love it. Elizabeth loves it. Ruthiana loves it. Come on, put those hands up. David loves it. Amen. Well, hallelujah. It would be great tonight if we could just go ahead and make an altar call for everybody. Who doesn't know Jesus? But everybody in this place knows him to some degree. You've made a commitment to the Lord. Praise God for it. Now just go ahead and let God have his perfect work in your life. Huh? Let go ahead and go ahead and let go ahead and let patience have her perfect work in your life. Go, let, go ahead and let the Holy Ghost have full control in Jesus' name. Listen, listen, people, we had a miracle. We had just a miracle of a, a miracle of a provision, a miracle of people being able to step out in faith and grow in faith and it's just going to continue to get bigger and the blessing of God is in it and I, and I could describe over and over again the tokens of the Lord in this and you know within a few days we had $200,000 to meet the first phase of the commitment because when, when in this negotiation with this, with this owner, he said no I want to see that, I want you to, I want to have proof of all the finances now, I want to see it and I'm like well, we don't have that. How about 200000 It just came out. He said, oh, that's good enough. You got that. That's okay. Well, we didn't have that. <laughs> but I knew Babu. I knew, look, I, I have, look. Babu's, okay, I, I heard it in the spirit. It was witnessed in the spirit. I felt it was absolutely God. But Father's got to work the miracle. So you can't go wrong when God's got to work the miracle, can you? <laughs> hey, Amen. And so he worked a miracle. God, he moved upon more than one people's, person's heart because it can't be just one person to make that. No one person made that miracle in here. And now we're in the second phase of it. And the second phase of it is, is another $280,000, which is great because on one side of it, it's just that much easier to do the monthly. And well, the Lord just, 
because there's a lot of going on. You know, Father won't press us beyond ourselves. But all of a sudden, we're in the midst of this, and, and I'm just, you know, like, Lord, is, help me, Father, help me. Help me hear you on this one. This is radical. This is so futuristic, it's radical. And the realtor comes to me and says, oh, there's a habitat group wants to buy all of your land that surrounds the area, the land that you wouldn't really want to keep anyways. And they, so they want to buy 200 acres of the 427 acres, which pays the bill, retires the note. Especially in the, in the view of 480,000 bucks being raised to start off with. I'm like, I mean, goodness gracious, Papa, how to talk about make it easy. Somebody said, oh, well, are you sure they're gonna come through? What? I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I can't even hear you. I, 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 are you kidding me? I can't even, I don't even, I'm guarding my heart. Well, all diligence, I'm not letting anything, I'm not letting doubt and unbelief get in here. Faith is powerful, changes nations, subdues nations, quenches the violence of fire. Come on, advances the kingdom of God. So, so right now we're at $280,000 phase. You know I've never talked about money. You know that. I'm doing this now to make, because this is a transition, it's a milestone in where we're going. I've never talked about money in this church. Talk about, well, we need to know the bills this and the bills that, and we, except for when it's been mission things. You know what I'm saying. And now because of the way things have developed and because of some people just saying, listen, we're going to be in this thing with you, skin in this thing. We've already got, you know, right at about another $100,000 committed. And I think there's like 215000 in the escrow right now. Another 100000 committed. Okay, for now, where are we at now? So that's basically 315000 okay? So now we just, we just whittled that 480 down pretty sizably, didn't we? Hey, what does that leave? 65? Huh? Well, 315, right? 165. Okay, thank you. Well, let's whittle down. She's not dead. She's sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Make it a little bit bigger. Man, just, you know. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. 165 sounds like a buck and some change. <laughs> So we want you to pray with us, believe God with us, just press in with us, saying, let's let God stir you up, let him stir you and whatever, you just bring it to us. Those of you watching by web, if you can see anything or hear anything, we invite you also to participate. I don't know whether I'm talking to anybody or not. <laughs> well, I'm glad I don't have to preach like that all the time. Look, get it. Okay, let's just. Let's just see the, let's see every part working to the full extent in its full measure, in every area, okay, in Jesus' name. Come worship the Lord with your giving. You know, those of you who have time to help out with the folks that are breaking everything down tonight, do so. Listen, right now our focus is on Jerabak Elementary School. Our focus is on this area, this zip code. Let's spend the, we're here for one month. Let's spend the month interceding. Let's spend the month praying. This place will never be the same. We possess this territory. This elementary school is going to pr produce champions for the kingdom. Yes. Amen. <laughs> if anybody needs prayer for anything, come, we'll pray with you and for you, Lord, to touch you. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. My first love, you are my first love to me. This kind of love will always be my first love, oh Lord, to me. My first love, you are my first love to me. This kind of love will always be my first love, oh Lord, to me. My first love, you are. My first love to me. This kind of love will always be my first love, oh Lord, to me. My first love, you are. My first love to me. This kind of love will always be my first love of love to me. Lord Jesus, touch the note. 
Just sing it out, girl. My love. Yeah, it's got to be tender, ain't it? Let me know you more and more. Let me sing like never before. My love. Fire of God, the power of God, the life of God, the works of God, the faith of God, in Jesus' name. Let me see you like never before. Oh, you need not doubt, just shout it out. You need not doubt the love and grace, the long suffering and the mercy. Hallelujah. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Oh, put a basir in the kitchen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. La vie vie. La vie vie. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> commanding a blessing in this place. Oh, the love of God, I see the love, I see the blessing, I see His glory in your face. Yes, the reminder that I like your soul. Oh, how glorious, how wonderful is Jesus. I'm my beloved in this mind. This banner over me is love. Oh, I might be loved. Indeed, nonetheless, you see me in mind. Oh, I might be loved. Indeed, it's mine. And it's been rubbing me. It's love. I am my beloved. Right out of your belly flows. It's rivers of the Holy Ghost. God is no respecter of persons. Has extended his grace to me. I'm my beloved and he's mine. His banner over me is his love. We shall pray in God, the Kodesh, the Panamen Kili, Matakarama. Just let the Lord feel every part right now. Let him feel every part right now. Feel every part. Do not come to the Lord on the basis of whether or not you were worthy. Work that way. 
but on the basis of the fact that he's rich in his mercy. Because of his loving kindness and mercy. Not according to any works which we have done, but because of the great love with which he loved us. That's it. That's how you connect. I said, how do we connect with this love? With his mercy. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, one of the hardest and most challenging times of life is going into puberty. It's difficult. Especially for boys. Those early hormone years. Somebody said, what's the most challenging time of the younger years? Developmental. Seven to ten. To get it to foundation laid. It's not one to five, it's seven to ten. And then, my goodness, how are you going to manage situation? Huh? Which is just, I mean, the gate opens wide, 13 to 15. Oh, my goodness. That takes a lot of wisdom, a lot of insight. Huh? It truly does. People, I'm going to just tell you right now, Papa understands. Papa knows. We're going to show you how to do this thing. Amen. We're going to show you how to do this. We're going to be right there with love and support and mercy and grace. I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, watch out. Don't shoot the wounded. <laughs> Amen. It's crazy. Hallelujah. Supposed to patch them up. Amen. Father, thank you for the anointing on Caleb Scott. Father, I thank you for this great grace, this great ability that you've given him to function as a psalmist, the flow in music, the gifting of music, of praise and celebration. Ain't nothing going to steal it, nothing going to cheat him, nothing going to rob it. Uh-uh. No? And Father, we just thank you right now. Make him strong, oh God. Strong in the street. Be stupid over on the street. Strong. Mighty, mighty in valor, mighty in word and deed, Jesus. Mighty for God, for healing right now. Santa Robo Bakistilima, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Watch what God's going to do with you. I'm so excited about you. So excited about what God's doing. Oh man, you don't see what I see. Uh, if you see what I would see, you'd be jumping up and down and running around the room. <laughs> Shouting glory. I was blind, but now I see. Lame, but now I walk. Amen. Dumb, but now I talk. Ura ba ba ba. Ura ba 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 ba. Usa ra ba ba ba. Usta tenish. Mang long Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rodesti Kaye. E remande ringo sting ring down the labongi stibaranea. E brastulabai. Mighty men. Mighty men. Mighty man Ezekiel. Mighty man Shiloh. Mighty man dad. Mighty man mom. Mighty woman mom. We made them men, both male and female. No, he didn't. Sukarast is today in the stock. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, great victories, no defeats, great conquest. In Jesus' name, increase, Mombrose. Increase. Increase. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The sterile of Mokopatia. Straight down. Straight down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, that's one thing about being very yielded to the Holy Ghost and submitted to the things of the kingdom of God and the church of Jesus Christ. It's so easy to receive healing. 
It's so very easy to receive the supply of all those gifts that God's placed in the church. One of them's healing. Julie was having a bit of an issue and, and Jeremy came and talked to me and he said something to me that touched my heart so deeply. What he said, I'm not going to tell you what he said, but it hit me so deeply, touched me so deeply. I knew when he said it that God would give him the miracle right then, right then. Because it was such a d deep expression of And he was weeping while he was telling me. Oh my goodness. Tell you, Ronnie, you stay that way. Everything that God supplies you get, you grow into. What you don't have now, you grow into quickly. That's what we're just trying. We're trying. I know we've got a lot of other voices we up against. Yes. All the voices and all the influences of your entire life that have programmed your mind to think the way it thinks. Your mind, the way your mind thinks, are the voices that are in your ears that can become much louder than the voice of God. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Father, we thank you for touching Sammy. <laughs> thank you for touching Samuel. Uh, oh, yes, and, and Zoe, too. And, well, that was brave. She actually came over here and looked at me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. There's this beautiful song saying, Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. I am the potter, you are the clay. It doesn't sing that, though, does it? That wouldn't sing right, would it? I am the potter, you are the clay. That wouldn't sing right, would it? I'm afraid that too many people want to sing it that way in the way they live it. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting. Here's the key word. Yielded. Somebody knew. That was, that's one of another ways that I know that song is birthed by the Spirit. Yielded. Still. It's such a powerful testimony over and again in the Word of God. The Father shows us examples where it would be impossible to be still, yet God demanded that they be still if the miracle would be revealed, if His purpose and His grace would be manifested. I'm going to learn from them. I'm going to be learning. I realize that God's Word, every one of every word, every syllable is filled with the very power of His life. And when all of a sudden that becomes a reality to you, you want to hold on. You literally live on every word. You live. You hang. You hang upon every word. Then you don't have to think for yourself anymore. Words already thought it out for you. There's an answer to every question that you have. How's the Koranea? Bele Kamanai. Bele Kamenai, Urstere Menemi, Urstere Monosu, Uriberis Tivrebe. Father, I want you to take a hold of this life and I want you to use Pamela with such authority and boldness. I want you to use her, oh God, where everybody looks and goes, That ain't her. That's God, the Holy Ghost. I knew, I knew kind of shy, timid family, but something happened. She became full of boldness, full of faith. None of the past rules her life. The Word of God rules her. It's the cost, Minkiki. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you for the working of your mighty power. Heaven rain down. Heaven rain down. Rain down. On Scott and Marlin. <laughs> Heaven rain down. Heaven rain down. Rain down. On Scott and Marlin. Nolan. Just to be stuck. Just to be stuck. Blessed. 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 My goodness, you're getting taller than I am. Blessed. Kestere Mastai. Blessed with might and strength and power and authority. Unwavering devotion to a call from on high. Oh, equipped, 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 equipped uh, with the Spirit of the Lord and the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Urabandeke. With boldness and confidence and assurance in the faith. You cannot stop somebody who's got assurance in the faith. You cannot stop them. They're going to keep pace. They're going to keep pace. You might run fast, but they're pacing you right there. They're right there. Come on now. Every one of you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Papa loves that baby. Come on. No sickness and disease got to depart out of his body. This is an attack of the enemy against the church and all that sickness. Just attack. It's not, something to come, it's not something that's natural, it's an attack. We stand up against it, those of us. You know, it's not designated leaders, it's leaders by, by deeds. It's leaders by divine insight. It's leaders by, it's leaders by yieldingness to the Spirit of the Lord. Then we come stand up against the thing, Amen. turn the battle to the gate. Amen. It's just true. And I just pray in Jesus' name, every one of you got that, and every one of you have that. We're not leaving anybody else. Okay. Just get ready. I mean, you remember how busy it was just to kind of host leaders and church people? Just wait till you're going to be hosting tens of thousands of people coming into the kingdom. Radical, messed up, amphida people. Dropping their amphidas, amphida, however you say it, signs and plaques. And they're just being radical because they don't know what to be radical about. They've been told there is no God. They've been told there is no truth. They're trying to find a meaning in the most radical way. Come on, watch what God's going to do with them. I'm not against them. I'm for them. Are you with me? In the sense of seeing them saved. I'm for them to see them brought in the kingdom. We're going to get it. Come on, people. God wants to move us right into the midst of the conflict. Right in the midst of the war zone. Right in the midst of the crisis. And everybody feel real comfortable. Oh, that's cool. I feel good. I don't want to stop this meeting. I love the presence of the Lord in the meeting. But we're going to stop because we have a deadline in this, in this building. We're just going to believe God. Just, we look, once again, we're going to, we're going to walk in obedience. And, and we're not, you're not going to get disappointed. You have 100 people tell you that that they're going to come and nobody shows up, it don't matter. Seeds are being sown. Things are getting watered. The word of God is going forth. The kingdom of God is being advanced. Father will give the increase. We will see the momentum. Amen. 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 Hug everybody in the place in the right way. See, buddy, look, you be, some of you are going to have to be Hawkeyes, you leaders. You're making sure you don't see anybody hug. Look, you're going to have to open your eyes. You hear me? We're going to have people who got have the ability to see and always walking watching always watching I see everything that's going on and I mean those of you I want you to watch me but especially hugging time you make sure everything's right and if it's not you say hey you come on I'm gonna lay hands on you cast that devil out of you that's the way we deal with it amen